The digital marketing industry is growing at an incredible rate. The global digital marketing and advertising market is estimated to grow from $350 billion in 2020 to $780 billion by 2026. 82% of businesses are actively investing in hiring content marketing writers for their company to build their online presence. 69% of businesses are actively investing money in SEO services for their websites. And 64% of businesses are hiring social media managers to manage their social media presence online. What's up party people? My name is Daryl Wilson. Today in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to start your own digital marketing agency from scratch step by step. So starting a digital marketing agency today makes the most sense because all businesses need a digital presence, but they don't have the time to invest in it. And that's where you guys come in. In this video, I'll also be giving you guys all of the digital marketing resources that you guys need to run a successful digital marketing agency. And I'll also give you guys a full marketing tutorial on how to properly market your digital marketing agency. So to get started, let's first talk about who this tutorial is for and also what is a digital marketing agency. A digital marketing agency is a company or firm that offers specialized services relating to online marketing and advertising. These agencies work with clients to improve their online presence and promote their products or services on the internet. The goal is to reach a wider audience, increase brand recognition, generate leads, and boost sales. Here's some examples of what kind of agencies you can start with this tutorial. A search engine optimization company, a content marketing firm, a social media marketing or a social media manager company, a pay per click company, email marketing company, a website design or website development company, online reputation management, software developer services, video editing or video creation for Instagram or even TikTok, and lastly, a UX or UI designer company. Now, me and my team, we spent a few weeks making this video. We got a lot of resources and feedback from digital marketer owners, and we compiled it all in this video. Now, we also do have timestamps in the description of this video. So if you guys want to jump to any section, you guys can use those timestamps. Also, if you guys feel like I'm going too fast or too slow, there is a gear icon at the bottom right of the screen that you guys can use to speed up or slow down the video. I think one of the biggest complaints with digital marketers is they can't find clients. And that's because a lot of them are doing it wrong. Many digital marketers start by going on Google and trying to compete with all these large corporations. And that is not what you want to do. There is also a huge demand for digital marketers. In our marketing section of this video, we're going to show you government agencies and organization that are willing to pay you 10 to $20,000 per job for quality digital marketers. So let's talk about what I'll be covering today in this tutorial. I'll be breaking this video up into four different chapters. In chapter one, I'll be walking you through how to make a modern and beautiful website that will stand out against your competitors. I'll walk you through how to get your domain and hosting, how to install WordPress, and you'll also get a free domain name in this tutorial. We are going to use a modern WordPress theme that focuses on digital marketing agencies and has a variety of amazingly designed templates for virtually any type of business or agency you wanna start online. In chapter two, we'll discuss your business plan. In this section, I'll show you how to start a business plan and also structure your business. I'll be walking you through the importance of the business aspects of owning a digital marketing business and also how to avoid scams. First, I'll be covering the importance of branding. In short, who are you and who is your target audience? I'll be teaching you how to operate your digital marketing business. I'll be discussing the differences between white labeling and also hiring freelancers to work for your digital marketing agency. Next, I'll be introducing you to several freelancer websites that allows you to hire your own staff at a good price. This will allow the freelancers to perform all the digital marketing work for your agency. You don't wanna hire the best rated freelancers because these are also the most expensive. So I'll give you my experience on some of the best freelancers to work with. In chapter three, I'll be covering the business resources. There have been a lot of new innovative resources that can help you with your digital marketing agency. In this part of the video, I'll show you websites where you can organize your team, get phone numbers for your business, and also resources to help build you and your business. Chapter four, we'll be talking about marketing. Marketing should be the second most important factor when starting a digital marketing agency. Without a marketing plan, you're only setting yourself for failure. So I'll be covering some of the best marketing strategies you should follow when starting an online digital marketing agency. I'll also be covering AI. With AI, you can create helpful content that can help reach new audiences and get more revenue for your business. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase fast web hosting. 
And this is SiteGround.com. Now, SiteGround.com is among one of the fastest, yet also most reliable web hosting providers available. Now, how do I know that? How do you guys know I'm not just lying to you, right? Well, we actually test all of the hosting companies that we recommend on this YouTube channel. So over the last 30 days, you guys will see that we've had zero downtime with SiteGround and all of our websites load at around one second with SiteGround.com. So you guys will have a fast and reliable website when hosting with SiteGround.com. Now, this is their current landing page, but the link that you guys used might have taken you guys to this page, which is my current landing page with SiteGround.com. Now, just for using my link, you guys will get a free domain. Pretty cool, right? So you guys just came up and you guys do get 86% off your web hosting. So congratulations. Now, here we have three different plans. We have the startup, the grow big, and the go geek. Now, I usually recommend the grow big. The main difference is with the grow big plan, you guys can host unlimited websites versus the startup, which is just one. And the go geek, you know, that's something, something a little bit larger scale, something for like me, you know, where my website's getting like a few hundred thousand visits. But for those of you who are just getting started out, the grow big will do just fine. So right here, let's click on get plan. So go ahead and register your domain, right? So this is the name of your website, and this can be anything, right? So just give it some thoughts. I'm gonna put something very basic here. So Daryl's chat tutorial.com. See if that's available. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, no, so sorry. Daryl's chat tutorial.com. There we go, okay. Next, you'll be brought to your review and complete page. So here you're gonna create an account. So you'll put in your email, your password, you'll put in your first name, your last name, yada, yada, yada. Here, you'll enter in your payment information, like your credit card and your social security number. I'm just kidding, guys, that's a joke. <laughs> they don't ask for your social, it's a joke. Don't, don't put it on there, it's a big joke. Next, we have purchase information. And for the period, I recommend doing either 12 months or 24 months. The reason why is because when you guys use my link, you guys do get the maximum discount code available. You guys also do get a free domain, so this will save you guys more money in the long run. Now here we have extra services. And guys, I do recommend selecting one of these options for extra services. I do recommend the domain privacy. This will actually protect your personal information from companies who want to send you spam, right? So if you don't check this, you guys might get emails for Viagra, for SEO packages, from all this crazy marketers. So if you guys do add domain privacy protection, this will protect your personal information from third parties. And once we scroll down, you guys will go ahead and confirm. And if you guys do want to subscribe to their newsletter, you'll click on that box. And once you guys fill everything out, you guys will then click on pay now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all this information out and I'll meet you on the next page. All right, cool. So once you guys go through the process and sign up and pay for your account, it'll then tell you that your account has been successfully created. Right here, let's click on proceed to customer area. All right, so it actually took me to a login page right here where it wants me to log in. So I'm going to enter my credentials here and then click on login. All right, and this is your welcome message from SiteGround. Now, the very first thing that you guys should do before we set up our website is to verify your address and your domain. The reason why is if you guys don't verify this within two weeks, they're gonna suspend the domain. So whatever email that you guys use to sign up for, you'll just go to that specific email and you'll get an email that looks just like this right here where it says verification required. You'll simply go over here and just click on this link and that's gonna verify your domain. So here is the current domain that I used. So we're gonna scroll down here and click on verify information. And the reason why they asked for that is because this is part of ICANN rules where basically the domain that issues them, uh, they want to know who owns that domain. So in case later you guys wanna sell it or you wanna claim ownership, they know exactly whose it is. So let's go back to our SiteGround account here. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is set up our website. So right here, click on set up site. So right here, we have our existing domain, right? Where we're going to select the domain that we already have purchased. So right here is the current domain. And then we'll click on continue. Next on the left side, you're gonna see start new website. Let's go ahead and click on select and start a new website. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna select WordPress. So right here under WordPress, click on select. Now go ahead and create your login credentials. Now these are the credentials that you guys use to log into WordPress so you guys can build and modify your blog and website. So right here, you'll put in the email address and then you'll put in a password. Make sure to write this down because if you guys do forget this, you'll have to uh, go to the reset password and you'll have to contact support if that email address isn't available. So yeah, just make sure to write this down, okay? And once you guys do, you'll go ahead and click on continue. 
So next they're offering us the SiteGround site scanner. I don't really want this. So right here, I'll just click on finish. Awesome, it is now creating our WordPress website. So just give us about two minutes. All right, cool. So now SiteGround has created our website. So over here under site tools, let's go ahead and click on site tools. All right, cool. And here is the customer site portal. And here you guys can access different things. Like you guys can create email accounts. You can access your file manager. On the left side, you can see you can access the file manager, you know, access your FTP accounts. Here you can get access to backups where they create a backup. I believe it's every six hours, pretty cool. And just some other security options. Uh, over here, you see WordPress, whoops. Here, I'll click on install and manage. Now, what I wanna do is log into our websites. So under WordPress, install and manage, if we scroll down, you're gonna see our installations. So here's our current domain. On the right side right here, where it says log into admin panel, go ahead and click on log into admin panel. And this is gonna log you into your WordPress websites. Now, this is SiteGround Setup Wizard, and you guys can actually choose to exit out of this, but if you guys want to actually go through the process, here, I'll click on start now. So once you guys log into WordPress, it'll prompt you through the SiteGround setup wizard. Now you guys can actually skip this because all it's gonna do here is make you install a WordPress theme, which we're gonna do a little bit later. So at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see the exit. Go ahead and click on exit. And ta-da, this is your new WordPress website. So this is the back end of your WordPress website and this is where all the magic happens. Now, if you guys wanna see what your website looks like right now, here at the top, you'll click on visit sites. And this is our new WordPress website. Little bland, little boring, but uh, don't worry, we'll make this site look really cool. Now, before we go any further, I do want to introduce you guys to some important general settings. Over here under the settings, you're going to go over here and click on permalinks. Now, over here, you're going to change this to post name. And the reason why we do this is because you want your websites to have clean permalinks that are SEO friendly. Like, for example, my website dash about us, right? Or dash contact us. So, post name is the correct uh, structure. So, click on post name and then click on save changes. Next, over here, you're going to see users and click on profile. Now, this is where you guys can actually change the back end of your website's uh, appearance. So you can go with default or light or modern, blue, you know, midnight, stuff like that. I do like midnight and, and uh, blue because it's just easier on the eye to see where your cursor is, right? It's also like midnight. Here, we're going to scroll down. Now, if you guys ever want to change your password in the future, right here under set new password, this is where you guys can enter in a new password and this password will be used when you log in to your WordPress website. Also, if you guys ever wanna change your email, this is where you're going to change it. And this is very important because if you guys forget your password, the password will be sent to this specific email address. All right, so now I'll go ahead and click on update profile. And one last option is the general settings. So over here under settings, I'll click on general. Now, if you guys ever want to change the language of your website here under site language, you guys can change the language of your backend to, I don't know, Chinese or Thai or Vietnamese or Spanish. So you guys can change the language right here. And once you guys are done with that, we'll click on save changes. All right, cool. So now let's click on dashboard. So now let me show you guys how you guys can log in and log out of your WordPress websites. So notice here how we can log in and log out of our WordPress website. But if you guys ever want to log in and log out, first let me show you guys how to do that. So over here, I'll click on log out. And then you're gonna notice that we're brought to this screen. But if I go over here and press enter, you'll see that the black bar is now not there and we cannot log into the website. So if you guys ever wanna log into your website from any location, you'll just click on, or I'm sorry, press the dash WP dash admin and then press enter. And then it brings you to the login screen. So here you can enter in your username or your email address and then enter your password. And then once you enter those, you'll click on login. So that allows you to pretty much work from any location. All right, now the very next thing that we're gonna do is that we are now going to install a premium WordPress theme that's going to automatically propagate our digital marketing websites. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase the essentials theme. You guys can also get there by going to darylwilson.com essentials. And that is my affiliate link. So this theme right here is dedicated for digital marketing agencies. 
You guys will see that it has tons of sales, tons of positive reviews. And on my last video where I got around almost a million views, people really did love this theme. Now, this is a state of the art new WordPress theme that just looks absolutely amazing. And it's gonna blow your competition out of the water because these guys are some of the best designers out there. In fact, they've won several awards on Envato Market for just having uh, beautiful designs and a premium WordPress theme. Now, just to give you guys an example, once you guys get here, you guys can click on live preview. Now, again, this theme does focus on digital marketing and they have the templates and the features to back it up. So as you guys can tell, you know, the overall structure of this theme is beautiful. Um, on my last video where we created a digital marketing agency, we used this theme and everyone absolutely loved it. So as you can tell, you know, they have a template and a design for every sort of agency. So here they have one for just a original multi-purpose agency where you can change the gradients. Here we have this minimal look where it just has this really unique new style look. Here we have a consulting firm and this can be anything, right? This can be like an SEO company. This can be, uh, you know, consulting for lawyers or, you know, a yoga teacher or whatever, right? And here we have a digital agency, which looks absolutely amazing. So right here, I'll just give you guys an example of how this looks. And this is their uh, digital marketing agency templates. And as you guys can tell, you know, it just looks really modern, extremely professional, and you guys can adjust the colors. You know, you guys can change the fonts. You can add in your own images, and then you can also add in your own logo to just basically make this website look like yours. And for a new beginner, you know, to have this kind of website, guys, I'll be very honest, uh, you'll be on top of the food chain because many users who make uh, websites for the first time, the websites usually look really bad. And I'm just telling you guys that from experience, right? So this theme does offer various templates that are dedicated specifically for digital marketing agencies. Here they have this modern design, right? Here they have a gallery. So if you guys are making like a portfolio website, here they just have a company, like just a normal brick and mortar company. Here they have like a finance. We have just this other unique style. We have a one page for those of you who just want one page. Here they have one for SEO. They have business services, agencies, the works. So I do recommend to get this theme for this specific video because I'll be showing you guys how to import the templates and have a beautiful website up and running in just a few minutes. Now, the great part about this theme, guys, is that this is a one-time fee. So you guys will pay this once and then you never have to pay a subscription. You don't have to pay recurring fees. You get lifetime access and support for this specific product. And I personally use this on my website, darewilson.com. So this is my website, darylwilson.com, and I'm personally using the Essentials theme on my specific websites. The reason why is because it just has a very modern and friendly look to it. And I think when users see this, they put their guard down, you know, they like the way it looks, it looks very inviting, and you're more inclined to get clients and clicks with this style look, right? So I'm personally using this specific theme on my WordPress websites. So let me go ahead and show you guys the back end here. So here you can see that we have the Essentials theme you know, uploaded and installed on my website. Let me go over here to the appearance. I have a lot of plugins, guys. That's why, uh, you know, there's a lot going on on my back end. We have a, we have a lot going on. You know, we sell a bunch of products. I'm making around, uh, I would say like five to 6,000 a month from um, our templates. And here is the theme. So I am personally using the Essentials theme. And if you guys are wondering, you know, okay, if you're using this theme, right? Well, is it fast? Is it good for SEO? Well, let me go ahead and show you guys. So this is my website, darylwilson.com. And as long as you guys are using good plugins and you guys are following good practices for website optimization, you guys can get your website blazing fast. So uh, I have a 100% page speed score. We have 100% for SEO, and you can see that um, the website itself is very fast. So as far as speed goes, the Essentials theme will not be a problem. Now, also, you guys might be wondering, well, you know, how does it do for SEO? I have several posts ranking on the first page of Google, like how to write high ranking blog posts. And, you know, we're using the Essentials theme. So as long as you guys have good quality content on your websites, uh, your website will uh, rank really well in the search result. So here's one of my posts that we have created. And you know, this post probably gets around a few thousand views a month. And it's just a really well-structured blog post that we created. 
So to answer your question, you know, is this good for SEO? I would say yes. Is the theme fast? Yes. And again, the best part is, is that you guys only have to pay one time and you guys get lifetime access. So it is a great deal. So I hope I convinced you guys to get this. You know, I, I really uh, can stress that this is a great theme, especially for beginners. So once you guys are here, you guys will click on add to cart and then you guys will go through the purchase process, right? So right here, go to checkouts and we'll go ahead and scroll down here and then you'll go ahead and pay with credit card or PayPal. Now, once you guys do this, I'll go ahead and meet you in your ThemeForce account. We'll show you how to download it and import it to your WordPress website. All right, so here is my backend right here, and you can see that I have purchased the Essentials uh, Multi-Purpose WordPress theme. Right here, you'll click on Download, and then click on Installable WordPress File Only. Now, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take that file, and then you're going to upload it to your WordPress website. So going back over here, all right, now we're gonna go over here to Appearance, and I'll click on Themes. Right here, I'll click on Add New, and we're gonna upload this theme. Now, one thing guys, if you already have a theme that you guys like and you're using it and you're using a specific page builder, this is not required, but it is recommended. But if you guys are using Elementor, I'll be giving you guys another resource on where you guys can find some other templates just in case you don't wanna go the essentials routes. So here is the actual theme right here. So I'll go ahead and click on the zip file. I'll click on open and then I'll click on install now. So now it's going to upload and install the Essentials WordPress theme onto my WordPress website. All right, so you guys will see that it has now successfully uploaded on my WordPress website. Now, if you guys are not using the recommended hosting, uh, sometimes if you guys are using shared accounts like from HostGator or something, you guys have to ask the hosting company to increase the max file size. So the size is about 32 MB and some hosting companies, they're their default is 16. So if you guys did get an error or it says that there was it was timed out, you just need to contact your hosting company and ask them to increase the max file size upload. There is this article here by WP Beginner that you guys can use, but if you guys just contact them directly and just ask them, they'll just do it really quickly. So if you guys did get that error, you guys can just go ahead and ask your hosting company to increase your max upload file size. All right, but for the rest of us, since we are using the recommended hosting, here I'll just click on activate and now we're going to activate the essentials WordPress theme. All right, now here we have the plugin installation. Now do not use WP Bakery. It's a really old ghetto builder. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's not good. You know, the builder that you guys want to choose is Elementor. So here I have Elementor selected. We also have contact form seven. Picks for likes, the one click demo import. I don't recommend using sliders, guys. Sliders add a lot of JavaScript to your websites and they really do slow it down, you know? Um, also, I don't want the slider revolution either because again, those sliders, they just slow websites down. So make sure that you guys have these recommended plugins installed and then click on install plugins. So essentially what plugins do, guys, is they are essentially like applications for your websites. So there's an app for everything, right? So this. Elementor is an app for building your websites. This is an application for a contact form. This is an application to add likes on your blog posts and so on and so forth, right? So let's go ahead and just wait one minute while these plugins install. All right, so those plugins have activated. So right here, I'll click on next step. So now they want us to activate the theme. So right here, I'll click on activate theme, all right? Now they might want you to make an account here and this is required if you guys want to receive support and updates. So what you guys can do right here is just create a new account, make a new account to this website. And this is also helpful because when you guys have a problem with your website, you guys can ask this website for support and they'll answer all the questions that you have uh, regarding issues with your websites. But I already do have an account, so I'm just going to click on login. All right, and right here, I'll click on complete verification. So they did install a plugin here that allows us to just activate the theme. So you'll see that the theme has activated because they know that we are using the Essentials theme and we have linked it up to their websites. All right, so now that that's done, here I'll just click on skip this step. And then I'll click on finish. Okay, now the very next step is we are now going to import a starter website. So let's go over here to the left side and under essentials, you're gonna see demo import. So here we have a bunch of demos. And what's really cool is that these demos are dedicated specifically for digital marketing agencies. So we have digital agency, consulting, a minimal approach, 
we have a company, a gallery, a modern Elementor, which just has modern designs. We have an SEO company, a fast company, a one page company, finance, original, and so on and so forth. So this pretty much covers all sorts of types of different digital marketing agencies. And the thing that separates this theme between other themes is these designs and the way it looks is amazing, right? So you're definitely gonna be ahead of the game. It looks really, really nice. And I think when users see such a nice looking website, they're gonna be more inclined to go with you and your company, right? So now let's go ahead and select a templates. Now, the one that I want to select is the Finance Elementor, which is this one right here. Um, it's a very simple template and it allow us to get started without, you know, having too much features and stuff on the page. So for the Finance Elementor, let's go ahead and click on imports. And then right here, you want to make sure that content is selected, theme options and widgets. And let's click on yes, imports. Don't worry if you guys want to choose another demo, we can go ahead and switch between demos and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a little bit. So mine actually imported quite fast. You can see that um, the import was done. You guys do want to wait until you get this message right here. And once you guys get this message, you guys can then view the website. So over here, let's click on visit site. And voila, you guys will now see that we have a beautiful looking website right here that we can easily go ahead and customize and design. You guys can change the colors, you can change the images and customize this however which way that you guys want, right? So as you guys can tell, you know, it's a beautiful looking website. So now that I showed you guys how to import a demo, let me show you guys how you guys can customize this. So let me give you guys a 10 minute overview about how to use the Elementor page builder. Here at the top, you're gonna to see Edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on Edit with Elementor. This is the page builder that we use in order to design and customize the websites. Now you guys also might get notices if it's your first time from Elementor saying, oh, check out the new AI, check out this. You guys can just close all those notices and it'll bring you right here to the actual page where you can design and customize elements. So Elementor works by simply adding in elements. These elements here on the left side are from the actual theme, right? These elements here are from Elementor, which are the basic elements. Here are the Elementor Pro elements, which you guys don't need. And then we have just like the general elements, right? And you can simply just drag and drop these elements onto the page if you want to, you know, propagate them. So for example, I'll take this star rating. And then when we have this pink bar right here, I can just drop it. And then here I can just, you know, put it in the middle and voila, right? Now I'm gonna delete this really quick. So over here, you're gonna see that we have the picks for elements right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag and drop one again, right? So they have tons of them and they have really nice, unique styles. So I'll take this marquee right here, just drag and drop it. And then you'll see now we have this sliding text and you can change the color, you can change the fonts and everything, right? So for example, for the marquee text, we'll put like, you know, digital agency, right? Digital, digital agency, right? And the other one, which is hello world, we'll put like hello Daryl, right? And then for the style, you know, we can change the color. So for every element, you have the content and this controls the actual content, right? The style usually controls the topography the color and also text shadow. And then for the advanced tab, this controls things like the margin, the padding, and it also allows really cool motion effects. Now for the content right here, for the content color, I'm gonna change this to white right here, right? And I also do wanna bold it. So under the style right here for topography, I'm gonna change this to Poppins, right? Poppins. And then we're also gonna bold it, all right? Pretty cool, right? And of course we can delete this or we can even duplicate it by right clicking. Here I can duplicate it. And I can take this under the pencil icon and I can drag and drop it somewhere else, right? So as you guys can tell, it's a very fluid drag and drop builder that's really easy to use. And let's say for instance, you know, you wanna get rid of this, right? So I'll right click, delete, and I'll right click and delete, right? So let's say for instance, I wanna get rid of this title and put in my own title. So I'm going to right click and delete this. Now on the left side, we can look for a heading text, right? Now, instead of actually scrolling and scrolling and trying to find it, we can just type it in, right? So heading. Now the animated heading, this is from the Pixford theme. 
So is this one right here. And this is from Elementor. You guys can use either elements. They both produce the same result. So for the heading, I'm going to drag it right below this badge until that pink line shows up and then drop it. And then this will be like, welcome to our new agency. And here I can align it in the center, right? And then for the style, this is where I can change the color and also like the font and stuff. So over here under topography, we'll change this to Poppins. And then we'll bold it. And then we can also make it bigger, right? Welcome to our new agency. And if you guys want to add in more text below that, instead of adding a paragraph, we can just type in text. I'm sorry, oops, text right here. And here we have the text. And you guys can also use the pics for text if you guys want. But I'll just use the basic text editor. Drag it below that. And all we're going to do here is go to style, center, and then we're just going to change the color. And then, of course, we can make it bigger, right? If you want to do that. And this can be something like that talks about your company. Like, you know, we are, you know, we are a Fortune, Fortune 500 company that makes a lot of money. Hire us. Okay. So essentially, that's how this drag and drop builder works, right? You guys can simply drag and drop these elements here onto the page and then options will propagate to design each element, right? And of course, if you guys want to get rid of one, you can just right click and then delete it, right? But let's say, for example, you guys want to create a whole new section, right? Maybe you don't want to use the templates. Maybe you want to create like your own from scratch. What we can do is right here, whenever there's a new section, you'll just click on the plus elements. And then right here, we'll click on the plus. And here we have columns, right? So we have one column, two column, three column, four column. I'll just click on the three column row, right? And here we have three boxes now. So now we can drag in elements, right? So maybe here I will throw in a badge. And then below that, I'll put in an image, right? And you guys can mix and match between the pictured elements and also the elementor elements, right? The pictured elements, they're just a little bit more stylish and there's a little bit more control and they make things easier. So here I'll upload an image, right? I'll put in, uh, let's see, what should we use here? I'll just throw in something like this. Okay. And then also below that, we'll put in some text. So I'll type in text. Here I'll put in a heading text. And then of course we have to design this, right? So this will be like our portfolio. And then for this style, I'll change this to black. And then we're also going to change this to Poppins. And uh, we'll make it bold. There we go. And then below that, again, we'll just put in some text, right? As you guys can tell, you can just keep stacking the elements right there, right? And then maybe I'll put in a button, right, to finish it off. Here I'll use a picture element button, right? And there you go. So it looks really clean, right? Really nice, really beautiful. Now what we can do here is we can duplicate and drag and drop elements. So for example, I will duplicate this. And then we can drag it into this one. Duplicate that and drag it right here. And so on and so forth, right? So I'll take that. I will duplicate this one here. And then I'll also do the same thing right here, right? So you guys can go ahead and, you know, drag and drop elements and move them around and stuff like that and make them however you want. And then all you got to do is maybe just change the image, right? So for example, I'll just put in a different image. Now, a lot of these images, I imported a few demos, you know, when I was on break and these are from different demos. So when you guys do import more demos, you guys will also get the demo images for those specific demos, right? But let's go ahead and select this one right here because the image is a little bit better size, right? And I'm just going to change the color right here. So background color, I'll change it to like blue. Okay. And the text will be white. Now I did this for a reason. So uh, I showed you guys how to duplicate the elements, but you guys can also duplicate entire rows and sections. So right here, I'm going to right click on this and duplicate that. And then for this section, I'll just delete it. So you can see that you can actually duplicate the sections and the columns, right? Now, right here, this is controlling the actual entire section. And this is where we can add in a background color and we can also add in space and vice versa. So for the style right here, for the background type, 
I'm gonna put in a color. This is where we can add a color, right? You can add a specific color here, maybe just like a hint of gray, right? It's just a small hint. And then for the advanced section, this is where padding and margin really come into play. Now I'm gonna unlink these values together and let's say you wanna add space right here because see this is too tight, right? I'm gonna add in like maybe 50 pixels to the top and then maybe 50 pixels to the bottom, okay? Now I'm not really gonna cover margin here. Margin is, is essentially pushing images or making specific elements start from specific areas. So for example, for this specific image, I can move the margin to like actually overlap other elements. Margin is a little advanced. I don't recommend it for beginners because it does have responsive issues and you can make your site look really weird on mobile devices. But before we go into that, uh, we can also duplicate this whole section. So under these six dots right here, I'm gonna right click and click on duplicate. And now you'll see that it duplicates this whole section. And then we can, you know, drag and drop the image here and vice versa. So as you guys can tell, it's a very fluid builder and it's very simple to use. And if you guys want to just drag in more elements here, like let's just drag in a, uh, so what else do we drag over here? Maybe a butt, or I'm sorry, a number, right? Throw in some numbers. Now, a lot of these elements don't properly display until you add in the content, right? So I'll put in like here, 40 or 50, text before, and then text after. And then this is content. So as you can tell, you know, there are specific sections where you can have like the content display, but if you just want like a number, all you gotta do is just basically get rid of all this and just like put in the number, right? And then you can go ahead and go to the other options here where you can design and customize like the color, the font and make it look however you want. And then you can also design the content for that specific button if you did that right. But uh, over here, what I'll do is I'll just uh, say, you know what? I wanna change this to, uh, let's just do, we'll do green. All right, green. And then for the text size, we can go ahead and adjust the text size uh, a little bit later when we talk about the theme customizer options once we select the sizes for the H tags. So don't worry about that. We'll talk about that when we talk about the theme settings a little bit later, right? All right, so that is pretty much it for the Elementor page builder. I do have another video that talks about how to use Elementor from scratch, and I will leave that video in the description below of this video. So here's the video that shows you guys how to use Elementor from scratch and all of the pro features, including the theme builder. It is four hours long, but if you guys watch this video, you guys will know how to even start your own web design business. So if you guys do wanna watch this video, I will leave a link to this video in the description below of this video. So as you guys can tell, using this builder is very simple, right? Now, if you guys ever wanna just get rid of a whole section here and start from scratch or make your own landing page, I'm gonna click on delete section here. And now we have this plus, right? So I'll click on the plus, And now we have the plus, but we also have this folder icon. So I'm gonna click on the folder icon. Now you guys might need to connect Elementor with your website. So it's gonna say connect with Elementor. So go ahead and connect your website with Elementor. And once you guys do that, it'll then give you access to these specific templates. Now what's really cool is once you guys connect your website with Elementor, you can use the Pixford uh, blocks. So you can actually use all the different landing pages uh, and the sections from the WordPress theme. So if you guys wanna mix and match sections, if you wanna have a different landing page, you guys can do that right here. So for example, if you guys like the other landing page here, like maybe uh, this one right here, I'll click on insert. And then it basically propagates that entire section, right? And if you guys just wanna say, you know what, I don't like it, let's change it up. You can delete it and add a new section and start all over again, right? So maybe you wanna add in another section or another landing page, right? Let's see if we have another one that looks pretty good here. I think this one looks really nice. Let's go ahead and use this one here. All right, so now we have this one. If you guys are interested in like a SaaS landing page and if you wanna see how it looks like full width, you'll see that this is what it looks like right now. So really awesome, really cool. And that's how you guys can, um, you know, add in sections and also design the homepage. Now really quick, I'm gonna go over here to history and I'm gonna go all the way back to editing started. And this is essentially gonna take us back to when we first imported the templates. Pretty simple, right? Pretty cool, right? 
So now if I go to view page, you guys will see that now it takes us right back to where we imported the demo, right? Pretty cool. So now that I've shown you guys how to use the Elementor page builder, now let's talk about how to actually import other demos, right? So let's go back over here to dashboard and we're going to go to the essentials and demo imports. And it's really simple. All you got to do here is just go ahead and maybe just import another one. So I'll click on yes, import. And what this is going to do, it's going to erase your entire website and it's going to now add it and replace it with the current templates. So over here, I'll go to visit sites and voila, you guys now have a beautiful digital marketing template that you guys can easily use on your website. And then you guys will just go through this obviously and make any changes you want. You can replace the images, add in new sections and so on and so forth. So let's go back over here and let's just test this out one more time. So demo imports. And let's say you want to do like consulting, right? I'll just import the consulting. Click on yes, import. All right. And once that's done uploading, we'll go ahead and click on visit sites. And voila, I mean, look how amazing that is. It's, it's so amazing how fast it makes it. It creates all of the content. It looks amazing. They have some really cool styles as you guys can tell and just really modernized looks that'll really win over your audience. Okay. So now that I've shown you guys how to import demos, now let's talk about how to create pages and also how to create menus. All right, now up here at the top, let's click on dashboard. Now, before we make pages, I do want to, you guys to actually import some headers. And the reason why is because we're going to use these a little bit later in the page settings. So before we create pages up here under demo import, let's first click on demo import, and we're gonna scroll down and here we have headers. Now, when we create pages, we can also import specific headers. And this is great because these are already designed. They look great and you guys can add these on any page that you want. So right here, I'm going to import the SAS header. So I'll click on import. All right, and then we're gonna import one more right here. So demo import headers, and then I'll also import the, uh, let's see which one we should import here. We will import the cryptocurrency one. So import, and then I'll click on import. All right, cool. So let's go ahead now and create pages. Now over here under pages, I'll click on all pages. These are a list of all of your pages, right? So when you guys import the templates, it creates all these pages for you guys automatically, right? But let's just create a new page. So in order to create a new page up here under add new, this will be like our team. And then I'll click on publish and publish. All right, cool. Now, right here, let's click on edit with Elementor. All right, now this right here is the default theme option. So it creates this header for us automatically. We can actually get rid of this a little bit later or keep it if you guys like it. But we're gonna scroll down and right here, we can go ahead and add in some more content for our, our team. Now for the search, what I'm gonna do here is just type in, oh no, no sorry, team. So we can find something for us, team. There we go. And just insert this block. And there you go. So now you'll see that we have this section right here. And obviously we can design and customize this and we can keep adding in more. So over here, I will add in a little bit more. So I'll put in team again. And you guys can keep adding more and more uh, content to the page, right? Actually, I think I already have this. Let's see. Let's see, let's, let's see if we can find someone else here. Uh, this right here frequently asked questions. I will also import that, right? All right. So that's how you guys can basically create a page and then add content to it. Like I showed you guys earlier, you guys can design and design this and customize it by dragging in these elements and so on and so forth, right? So over here, I'll click on updates. Now, if you guys do want to get rid of this header, let's first go over here and click on view page. I'll show you guys how to do that. So right here, I'll click on edit page. So now let's go ahead and scroll down and right here, you're gonna see Pixford options. Now these are some additional options that you guys can use if you guys wanna design and customize the actual uh, header area. So here we have the intro background image. That was the image that we saw when we first loaded the page. But if you guys do wanna get rid of this, all you gotta do right here is under the high top area, just click on yes, and that will allow you to hide it. 
Now also we have the custom header and then also we have custom footer. Now you guys can actually use a custom header that we imported previously. So here we have like the SAS header, the consulting and all these other headers, right? So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and select the SAS header and then click on update. And now let's view the page. All right, cool. So now you can see that we have that different header that we uh, have for this specific page. And then we have our content here and everything looks great, right? Now over here under edit page, you guys can actually switch different headers on different pages if you guys want to do that. If you guys want the same header on all the pages, just click on theme defaults. But I'm just gonna select one more right here. I'll select consulting header, click on updates and view the page. And now you guys will see that this header changes for this specific page. So that's how you guys can create pages and also add different headers to various pages. Now let's talk about how to actually create a menu. So I'm going to click on the icon right here. And here you can see that we have this hamburger menu and it basically displays this list of pages, right? But I only want to display pages, you know, that I want to display on the websites. So let's create a menu. So over here, dashboard, we'll go down to the, um, I'm sorry, the appearance and click on menus. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new menu. So these are menus that they created for us automatically. But right here, I'm going to click on create a new menu. And this is going to be my main menu here. OK, here, click on create a menu. Now, over here under pages, you're going to see a list of all the pages that you have on your WordPress websites. So for example, if I just want to add in like our team section, right? I know we have duplicates. So that's because we imported uh, various demos. So you guys will need to delete those if you want to get rid of them. And also here we're going to select the, you know, the home page, right? So this is the front page. We'll select this one and then we'll also select the about and then the blog and then maybe, um, maybe one more. I think that's good, right? So we'll add those to the menu. Okay. And also the contact. Okay. So now we have the home page about the blog, our team and the contact. And this is our primary menu. And then I'll click on save menu. All right, cool. Now we need to assign this specific menu to the actual uh, website. Now in order to do that, we're going to go over here to headers and I'll click on all headers. Now we are currently using the minimal header. Now you guys might want to change the actual name of the header to like the main website header. This will prevent confusion, right? Because there are a lot. And uh, I personally use the same strategy just to make sure that I know that I'm designing the current menu or header of my website. So right here, I'll click on edit. Now here we have the actual menu. So I'll click on the menu. And then for the menu up here, I just want to assign this as my main menu. And then at the bottom, I'll click on save and update. All right. Now let's click on visit site. And if I click on the hamburger menu, you guys will now see that it displays our current menu right here. So we have the home about blog, our team, and then contact. Now I might want to actually change the name of this. So I can do that by going over here to menus. And for this, we're just going to put home page. And I'll click on save. And going back over here, if we open the menu, you'll see that's the home, the about, the contact, and all the pages that we added to the actual menu right here. So that's how you guys can pretty much add a menu to your websites. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the contact form. This is going to be a very important part of your website. And I just want to make sure that you guys understand how this works right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually get rid of that introduction again. So over here, I want to hide the top area, right? And I like the header. So I'm going to leave the header there here under view page. Now we have this is our contact form, right? So right here, you're going to see that this is our current contact form. So right here, let's first click on edit with Elementor. All right, and we're going to scroll down. And if I click on this, you guys are going to see that this is a short code, right? So we are using form 2939, right, of contact form seven. So let's just go back and introduce you guys to the contact form. So let's go back over here. And now we're going to scroll down to contact and click on contact forms. Now we are using this form right here, 2939. We don't even need these other ones right here. So I'm just going to 
basically delete these to prevent confusion. And actually, we're going to get rid of all these forms. So I'm going to delete all these and we are going to create a contact form from scratch. So up here, I'll click on add new and this is going to be our main contact form. OK, and here we have the site admin email, right? It's coming from our WordPress websites. The subject is whatever subject they put on there. And then here it's just going to notify that it's coming from, you know, our email and our website as well, right? So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and save this. And we're going to go back over here and click on contact forms. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this short code and we're going to go paste it back on our contact us page. So let's go back over here to visit site. And we'll go to contact. We're going to scroll down and now we're going to paste that right there. So here, click on edit with Elementor. We're going to scroll down and right here, we're going to go ahead and paste in that new short code. So I'll go ahead and paste it in there. Then I'll click on update. All right. So let's go ahead and click on a view page. We're going to scroll down and here is our new contact form, right? So we're going to put Daryl Wilson. Uh, Patty at AOL. Hello, how are you? Now, if you guys do want those other contact forms that are well designed, you guys can use the advanced contact forms that are come by default. They are a little harder to design and mess with because there is a little bit of options that I'm not going to cover because it's very advanced. But um, you guys can use just a default form like this. But if you guys do want to use those other ones, you guys can just use those short codes from those other contact forms. But I do want to show you guys how to create your own just in case you want to go that route. So I sent that contact form. Now what I'm going to do here is go to my email. Okay. And right here, you guys will see that it landed right in my inbox. So if I click on this, you'll see it came from WordPress at tutorial domain. So it's actually going through WordPress and then our server, and then it arrives directly on our email inbox. So that's how you guys can use the contact form so you guys can get messages from your website. All right, so now we're going to talk about the theme options for the Essentials theme. The theme options allow you to pretty much design various parts of the website and every theme has a theme options or a theme customizer. So the first thing I want to talk about is we have the general settings, right? Then we have layout, blog, portfolio, pages, topography and shop. And each of these design and customize different parts of the actual websites. So for example, here we have a custom logo. If you guys do want to upload your own logo right here, this is where you're going to do it. So for example, if you want to put in your logo, you're going to put your custom logo here. And then we have scroll logo. This is referring to when people scroll down on the actual website, if you're using a transparent header. Here we have a mobile logo. So you guys can choose to have various logos for different devices. And here you have page padding. Now what page padding is, I'll go ahead and open this in a new tab here. So page padding is essentially adding padding on the ends of the website. So it's going to add it to the top and also to the sides. Essentially, it's making it a little bit smaller. I know it's harder to see, but you can see at the top right here, there's a little bit of white, and that's because we added in five pixels of padding. And then of course, you guys can also add in like a background color here. So for example, we'll go back over here and apply the background color. All right. And now you guys will see at the top right here, there is this little color on the out border of the actual websites. It is a nice look, you know, if you want to achieve this, you know, it's pretty hip, it's pretty trendy and it looks nice. Just make sure that you don't add a lot of pixels. And that's how you guys can add in uh, the page padding with the actual background color, right? So I'll go ahead and just leave it for now. You know, why not? And next we have pop-ups. Pop-ups are essentially if you guys do want to have pop-ups on your websites in the section over here under demo import, you guys can import pop-ups and have them pop up on the website, which looks pretty cool. Sidebars. These are uh, custom sidebars, which I'm not going to cover because that's going to talk about uh, how you can have various sidebars on various pages and that can get a little complex. Here's API keys where you're going to enter in your Google API key. If you have one cookie consents. Now, by default, if you guys notice here, sometimes when you visit the website at the bottom of the page, there was that little notice saying like, oh, hey, you know, uh, do you want to accept cookies? This is where you guys can enable the cookie banner, right? And you can put in your specific content here 
and just let them know that this is, um, you know, that this is a, a cookie notice and we collect information and stuff like that. So next we have like page transitions. So right now you guys can see if you go to our website and we refresh it, there's a little bit of a page transition. It's like a small fade, but you guys can actually change that to something else. And then you guys can add a color to that specific transition. So for example, if I go over here and refresh it, you're gonna see that it has that fade and it has that color, right? So whatever we selected, it is pretty tacky. I mean, let's be honest. So uh, if you guys do add one, just make sure it's very like subtle and very small. And then also we have the loading bar and loading animation, which you can turn on and off. Next, we have the 404 page. Now, right now, it's just going to basically create a custom 404 page when you when we use the demo importer. So for example, if someone visits your website and goes to the wrong page right here, it's going to automatically load the actual 404 page that was created when they imported the templates, right? All right, Ski, can we turn that off right there? Let's see, yeah, let's just turn this off right here. We're just gonna disable that, right? Okay, sometimes if this doesn't work, you guys need to clear your cache so you can purge the cache, or if you guys are using um, Hostinger, you guys can install the caching plugin. And after you guys do that, it should work back to normal. So if the changes are not saved yet, you just need to clear your cache. Here you have Elementor, which are just some other options, which you know I'm not really gonna cover here. And then the advanced, which is you can turn on or off lazy load if you guys wanna go that route, right? So that is the general options, right? They're just general options for like logo, pop-ups, uh, sidebars, cookie consents, you know, stuff like that, right? Now let's talk about the actual layout. This is actually a little bit more important. Now you guys can apply a global header for all of your pages. So for example, if I want the SAS header right here, I'm gonna save that, refresh the page, and watch the menu here. The menu is gonna change to the SAS header. And if I go to all the pages, it's going to actually keep that header on all of the pages, right? Now, if I want to change that, I can go over here and say, you know what? I want the consulting header on the entire websites. And if I refresh the page, you're gonna see that it changes the actual header. And if I go to the About Us page or the blog, it's gonna be the same exact header. Now, you guys can actually go to each page and override the header independently if you wanna do that. So you can have a header for every page, but I'm just basically saying this is gonna be like the, the default header for the actual websites. All right, got that, makes sense? All right, cool. Now we have footer. So footers are basically those footers that we imported and we can just go ahead and select a footer here. So we have the finance footer. Here I'll scroll to the bottom and you'll see that this is our current footer, which is our consulting, but if I refresh it, you're gonna see it changes now to finance. So what we can do is we can go ahead and change that, but I do like the consulting one. I think that one's actually really creative and really nice. So I'm gonna use this one right here, right? But that's how you guys can adjust your footers. Now, if you guys do wanna add in more footers, it actually is a little bit more difficult than the headers. So you'll go over here to footers and go to add new footer, right? And then this will be like footer website, cool, right? And over here, you'll click on Edit with Elementor, and this is how you can custom build your footer. So the first thing is give your footer a name, right? So this will be like the website footer. I'll go ahead and first publish this, and then I'll click on Edit with Elementor. Now over here, I'm gonna click on the folder, and what we can do is we can search for the footers, right? So let's go ahead and scroll down here, and we're gonna find footers. There it is. And we can just select one, right? So we can just select this one here. I'll import this footer. And then I'll just click on update. And once I've done that, I can now assign this specific footer on my website. So I'll go back over here to exit. And then for the footers, I'll click on footers. And there is the website footer, right? So now all I gotta do is go back over to the theme options and apply the website footer. So over here, website footer, save changes. And if I refresh the page, you guys will now see that it's that new footer that we imported for our website, right? So it's pretty simple, right? You just have to know like where to actually do it. It's, you know, when you first use the theme, it's confusing, but then after you have someone show you, you're like, oh, I totally get it. So the next we can add a banner on our websites. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and select a primary color. We're gonna get to colors in just a little bit here. 
But uh, this will be like, you know, 10% off our consulting service, right? And check it out now. And then here is the link for our specific uh, button, right? And then here we can design the button style, the color and the text and stuff like that. So over here, I'll click on save changes. And if I scroll to the top right here and I refresh the page, you'll see that now it says 10% off, right? If you guys do want to get rid of the banner, just click on off, save changes and then refresh the page, and then you'll see it's completely gone, right? So now we're gonna go over here to the social icons. If you guys do wanna add social icons, you know, on the footer of your websites and have them linked to these specific areas, you guys can go ahead and, you know, just put in the links there. But uh, let's go over here and click on colors. Now, earlier we talked about how there's primary color, secondary color, and link color, right? Now I want to use some other colors right here. So this will be like my new primary color, right? And for secondary color, I'll put this one, right? Now here we have primary gradient colors. Now we can actually use specific primary gradient colors, which is really, really cool. So over here, I'll put this color and then we'll put this yellow and then we'll put this orange, right? And we don't see it right here. I wish they did show us a, like a little presentation, but it's gonna actually use three gradients um, for specific colors. Now, going back down here, you can see we have our main colors, right? And you guys can choose to design and customize this. But what I wanna do here is um, I wanna go ahead and click on save changes. Okay. Now let's go back over here and I now want to turn on the builder really quick and I'll show you where these are applied. So right away, you guys can see that the colors of the actual buttons changed. The reason why is because we now have this as our primary color, right? Now also what we can do here is if I click on this button, we're gonna go over here to the color section. I believe it is under the button settings. And for the button color, we are now going to use the, is a primary gradient? Yeah, the primary gradient. So now you guys will see that we have that primary gradient that we created, right? So we're using this teal, yellow, and orange section, right? So it's, it's a really nice looking gradient. And um, this is how you guys can apply specific gradients on your website if you do wanna go that route, right? So um, yeah, that is colors. I know earlier we saw the primary and secondary link color, and this is where you guys can design and customize the colors. All right, cool. Here we have advanced, that's for CSS. I'm not really gonna cover that. So next we have the options for the blog page and also the blog post. So here we have the blog page layout. So this is the layout for your actual blog post. And then this is the layout for the blog, archive, search, author, and so on and so forth. I personally use this one right here, but normal grid is also pretty cool. Um, so right here you can choose to have a sidebar or if you want this like narrow width or you can have a full width. But I think most users today use either like this focused reading style or they add a sidebar if you're an affiliate website, right? But I'm just going to leave mine here in the middle, right? And then for post style, you can have your post displayed a specific way. Now, this will only really um, matter if you choose the normal grid because uh, over here under post, it has one predetermined style. And then when someone actually clicks on your blog post, you can actually choose to have a specific layout for that specific blog post as well. So if you want like a sidebar or no sidebar, it really just depends on how you want to approach your uh, blog, right? And then we have some other general styles where you can add a box style, post full width layouts. And then here you can add some specific colors. So for the background color, you can add like a gray and you can mess with these other styling options. So right here, I'll click on save changes. Now also under the intro section, this part right here, you guys can control the actual introduction of your blog page. So you can actually turn on the introduction and then have like some sort of design and style. And then also you guys can upload a background image and then also add in like a gradient. So I've actually used the primary gradients. And then you have some other general styling options like disabling breadcrumbs and titles and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and click on save changes and take a look at our blog page. So here is our blog page, and you can tell that we're using that primary gradient. We have that image from the background. And then right here, we have some articles in a really nice, clean format. It also showcases it in like a box style, like I mentioned before. If you guys do wanna change these options, you'll just go back over here to general. And then for example, if you want like the normal grid, you can choose that as well. And over here, if I refresh the page, 
you're gonna see that now it has a normal grid style. You guys can also choose how many rows you want and stuff like that. Now, uh, right here, you just can't actually heart this, which is pretty cool because that lets users know they like your blog post. And then once they click on it as well, it has the title of the actual post. And then here is the actual content where users can scroll down and get more information. Now, I personally use this same exact format on my website, except I just got rid of the introduction right here. So let me give you guys an example. So here I have this blog post and it's how to speed up your WordPress website. You can see that users can uh, click on the hearts, they can comment, and then over here they can you know see the categories and when they scroll down, you're gonna see that um, it's just general content. Now, all I did here was I just added a small gray background because I think like the white was just too much on the eye, right? Or I think actually they're using a subtle background as well, right? Yeah, so it looks like we are using the same one. And once we scroll down here, you'll see that uh, we have the blog posts. It looks cool, really nice structure. And then we finish it off here with the author box, share on Facebook, share on Twitter. It also navigates users to other posts. And then here we have related posts. So just like this same uh, format, we actually chose the same style, right? Because it's very clean and it makes users circulate your websites to keep them on the website as long as possible. Because that usually means if they're on the website as long as possible, that there might be some sort of conversion or a sale if they're on your website for a long time. So those are what those options are. So again, I personally use this same theme on my website. Then also we have portfolio where you guys can create portfolios. So over here, you guys can create new portfolios and then design those pages as well. Here we have pages. And again, these are just general options for your pages if you wanna have like a, a page background, but no one really uses the page background too much because most people use the page builder. Here we have intro. If you guys do want intros on your actual pages, you guys can have that set to default, but I don't recommend that because the page builder here does all of the work, right? So it doesn't really make sense to add another introduction here. I mean, you can if you want by turning on this right here, and then that's gonna add some sort of intro on all of your pages, right? So now if I refresh the page, it's gonna add an introduction here. I mean, it does look nice and stylish. You guys can go that route, but me personally, I would rather just have the page builder do that work instead of the actual theme, but you guys can go both ways, right? And then here we have topography where you guys can select specific fonts, right? So for example, you guys can choose like a default body font, a default heading font. I think mine is Poppins, right? We're gonna use Poppins for everything. On my website, darewilson.com, we use Poppins. We've just discovered that um, most corporations and businesses use Poppins because it's just a very friendly font that just looks very friendly and it, it just stands out, right? But we bold it, right? So you need to make sure that Poppins is bold or else it looks kind of weird. I don't know why that is, but uh, for some reason, Poppin looks much better when it's bolded. And then here we have some advanced options where you guys probably won't mess with. And then here you guys can choose library icons. If you guys want to use specific icons right here, you guys can select um, like light library, basic icons or main library icons. And then you can use those when you import specific elements with the page builder. And then we have shop. Now this actually has a really awesome e-commerce style. Like for example, if you go to our demo, so I went ahead and I opened up one of the demos right here on their website. And once we scroll down, you're gonna see that these are products, right? I do like the presentation. They actually have up to like five or six styles on how to present products. And they look really nice, really clean, and I do like the way it looks. Um, over here, once we click on this, there are actually more design options where you guys can add in the title right here. But overall, you guys can tell it's a very simple, yet it's also a very friendly sort of uh, product page. I really do like the product page for this specific theme. So you guys can use this on your website if you guys are running an e-commerce website. I should have a video on this theme. You know, I feel like it's uh, really underrated, but, but uh, yeah, you guys can have different styles right here for your products. Here under intro, you guys can add a specific intro for your products. And under the advanced options, you guys can choose to um, enable or disable specific options, right? And then the import export, you guys can import and export this onto other various websites. So those are the theme settings summed up. As you guys can tell, once you guys get used to it, it's not that difficult. And once you guys mess around with the theme for probably like an hour or two, you guys will definitely get the hang of it. And you guys can use this to master and make sure that your 
uh, digital marketing website looks amazing. So now let's talk about how you guys can create blog posts for your websites. Now making a blog post is really simple. In fact, it's the same way on how to make pages. So up here under plus new, you'll click on posts. And this is where you can create your first blog post for your website. Now, as a digital marketing agency or any type of agency online, you wanna focus on topics that businesses are currently looking for. We'll talk more about this in the marketing section, but here's an example. How to start an LLC in seven steps. Now, this is a great topic for someone to talk about or for you to talk about because businesses that are starting are probably researching this specific topic. As a result, they're gonna find your agency and they're gonna learn more about your business and they might be more inclined to hire you, right? So this is the current title and then right here, you guys can just enter in some content. So you guys can just go ahead and type away. So just to keep it brief, I just went ahead and I entered some content from Forbes right here. So I'm just basically using this as dummy text. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you guys do decide to write the content, if you guys want to add in images, which is a big part of a blog, you would type in dash image. And this is where you can upload an image, right? So right here, I'll put it in an image of something, right? So how to start a business. I'll go ahead and just put this image here and then we'll scroll down. And then right here, we'll try to find a registered agent, right? So image media library. And I'll just throw in uh, this image here, okay? And so on and so forth, right? So before every topic right here, I'm going to insert like an image to, you know, to make the image, I'm sorry, the article stand out and make it look good, right? So I'll just throw in one more right here. Now, what is the image that represents this article? On the right side, once you scroll down under post, you're gonna see featured image. This is where you're going to want to enter the image that represents the article, right? So I'm talking about an LLC, right? So I'll just reuse one of these images here. And once we're done with this specific post, we can go ahead and publish it. Now, this is just the very bare basics of, uh, you know, creating a blog post. Obviously I have other videos that go in detail that talk about how to make blog posts with ChatGPT and stuff like that. But this is how you would just create a basic generic blog post, right? So once you guys create your blog post, what I'm gonna do at the top right, I'm gonna click on publish and publish. And then right here, I'll click on view post. And here is the actual article, right? So how to set up an LLC. We have some content, we have the images, and there you go. So as you guys can tell, you know, it's a cool looking blog post. We have the uh, reading progress at the top. We have the author, and then we have uh, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, and then they can go back and look at other articles. Now let's say scroll up right here and go over here to blog. You're going to see that the article is right here. So that's how you guys can create a blog post for your website. Now I have a video right here that shows you guys how to actually use ChatGPT to create really high ranking blog posts. In fact, we have created a blog post titled how to build more backlinks to your product pages. We use ChatGPT and we are now ranking on the first page of Google. Now, obviously this is not gonna happen with everybody, but it did happen with us. And uh, we walked through exactly how to use ChatGPT and how to create really catchy titles and also how to use prompts that will get you guys ranked on the first page. Now, I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but I'll give you guys all of the resources. So if you guys do wanna learn more about blogging and you know how to use ChatGPT to get more traffic and build a brand and an audience, I will leave this video in the description below of this video. All right, so now that our website's up and running and everything is good to go, I do wanna show you guys how to make your website fast and also how to properly SEO optimize it for all major search engines. And we can do that with two plugins and it's really simple. Now I'm gonna show you guys the plugins that I'm currently using to get a 100% page speed score on Google. So over here, let's first make our website fast. I'm gonna type in Excel, A-C-C-E-L, and you're gonna see this plugin right here called the Seraphonite Accelerator plugin. Go ahead and click on install now. And this is the plugin that we're gonna use. And then I'll click on activate. All right, now on the left side, we're going to scroll down and we're gonna see Accelerator. Go ahead and click on Accelerator. Now right here, it recommends to download the free extended plugin version. This is required. I'm not sure why, but um, what we're gonna do is download an add-on right here and that is pretty much like the gist of the plugin. So once we do that, we're gonna go back over here to plugins, 
add new and under upload plugin, I'll click on choose file and then we're going to upload the accelerator.zip. So I'll go ahead and upload it and click on install now. All right. And then right here, I'm going to click on replace current with uploaded. All right. Here I'll click on go to plugin installer. Now, if you guys are using the Cycron Optimizer plugin, you guys might need to disable that. So on this website here, I am using the Cycron Optimizer plugin. So if I scroll down right here, I'm going to just deactivate that. And then make sure that you guys do activate the Seraphonite Accelerator plugin once you guys deactivate the Cycron Optimizer. All right. And then here, I'll click on Begin Setup Wizard. Now, I want this full functional, right? The full functionality. And now I'll click on start a self diagnosis. So they're basically just making sure that we can use the plugin. And in most cases we can, right? All right. Now right here, it's saying it should be enabled, but we don't have to. So we're just going to skip it. You'll click on next. I want a high score. And then here we have the setup wizard as far as um, the performance of the site's hosting. We're just going to put low because most of us are using either a shared or cloud host. And right here is the layout universal. I'm going to put no. So for most WordPress websites, it's going to be no for some static websites. It's going to be universal. But so for most of us following this video, we're just going to select no and click on next. We're not going to use the CDN and then we're going to optimize all of the pages websites. And that is it. So as of right now, this website is fully optimized. All of the images are going to be automatically optimized and the JavaScript has been deferred. The CSS has been aligned. So just by installing that plugin, we now have a fully optimized fast websites. Now, the last part is we now need to optimize it for SEO. So over here, we're going to go scroll down and we're going to go to add new. Now there's various plugins that you guys can use. You guys can use either Yoast, you can use rank math and you guys can also use the all in one SEO plugin. I do have a video on all in one SEO and I also do have a video on rank math. Yoast, I have an old one, but either three of these plugins will do just fine. But for this video, I'll just walk you guys through rank math. Rank math essentially will help index your website in the Google search results. It also will generate a site map that you can submit to the Google search console and stuff like that. So right now I'm going to skip this. And I'm going to put easy and we're going to start the wizard. All right. So what kind of website is your website? Well, my website is basically a business website. We're going to put the organization, the name of the websites, the website alternative name, the person who's managing the websites. So for the logo for Google, just make sure that you guys do upload your own logo here. And this is going to appear in the Google search results. Here you have a, d a default social share. So this is the default image that's going to be shared or shown when someone shares your websites across social media or other platforms. So right here, I'll click on save and continue. We're not going to connect rank math just yet. Here I'll click on save and continue. And then I'll click on return to dashboard. All right. Now this plugin is actually pretty helpful because you guys can actually go ahead and uh, submit your sitemap to Google and other uh, SEO options. But one of the more important options here is make sure you guys click on edit page and we need to actually set our home page for the Google search results. So up here, you're going to see this rank math icon. And then right here, you're going to see edit snippets. So this is currently how our website looks like in the Google search results, but I want to change that, you know, so we're going to put, you know, the digital, digital marketing agency gurus, we get you business, right? So I'm just, you know, putting this as just an example, right? So we're going to put, um, need digital marketing for your business. make yourself known on the internet with our digital marketing skills. Now I recommend adding as many keywords here as possible. So right now you can see we've typed in 112, but the maximum is 160. So make sure that you guys do add as many keywords as possible. And if you guys want to see what this looks like on the Google search, here, I'll go to show you guys my website. So here you guys can see that we have Daryl Wilson, home of the free WordPress tutorials. 
Here is the logo. That's why it's very important to apply that. And then here we just have some general information about the actual website, right? So fill in as much information as you guys can. And then once you guys do that, you guys can click away here or close this and then make sure that you guys update it. Okay. Now the very last thing that we need to do here is I just want to show you guys how to submit your sitemap to Google. Now this is a little, I guess you can say advanced, but it's not really advanced. It's very simple. Um, we're going to go over here to rank math and go over here to dashboard. A sitemap is essentially telling Google that your website is alive and it's ready to be indexed. So right here, you're going to see sitemap settings. And if I click on this little permalink, this right here is my actual sitemap. Now I'm going to go to Google and submit this sitemap. So over here, let's go to Google. So I'm going to type in the Google search console and I'm going to click on the very first link here. Click on start now. Now, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just basically telling Google that my website is alive, right? Now you guys will need to have a Gmail account in order to access the Google search console. But once you guys do here on the left side, you're going to go to add a property. You're going to put in your domain name, right? So HTTPS tutorialdomain.com and then go to continue. Now I already have this actually verified already, but what you're going to do here is just go ahead and go to property on the left side. You're going to see sitemaps and you're just going to want to paste that sitemap in here, right here like that. And then click on submit. As you guys can see, I already have my sitemap on here, but this is just how you guys can uh, submit your sitemap to Google, right? All right. So I successfully submitted my sitemap and there is my sitemap. Now I probably will have another video that talks more about SEO, like submitting sitemaps, Google analytics and other things. But I think right now you guys understand the basics of, you know, SEO. And I do have many videos that cover SEO and I'll put those in the description below of this video. Now, just to remind you guys, you'll need to go to every page on your website and you want to make sure that you guys optimize it for SEO. So over here, rank math under the about page, you do want to make sure that you add in some more information here on every single page, and this will help get you ranked better on the Google search results. And once you guys are done editing it, just make sure that you guys click on update. So that is pretty much it for the website part of this video. Hopefully that you guys understand how to build your websites, how to uh, make it fast, and also how to fully optimize it with the SEO plugin. I know I just touched base on it a little bit, but I do have many other videos that cover SEO and I will leave all the resources in the description below of this video to make sure that you guys have a fast and fully SEO optimized website. With that said, let's go to the next section. All right, party people, welcome to the business section of this video. In this part of the video, we'll be going through all the business aspects of creating and starting a digital marketing agency. There are several things that we need to understand and know when starting a digital marketing agency. And we're gonna go through these slides here and I'm gonna walk you guys through step-by-step step on exactly how to get started, right? You guys like my little slideshow right here? You know, pretty cool, right? Now let's first go ahead and just jump to the basics here and let's talk about again, what is a digital marketing agency? For those of you who maybe don't know yet, we're just gonna go through it one more time. A digital marketing agency is a business that provides a variety of online marketing services for other companies. These services can include online advertising, SEO, content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, influencer marketing, digital advertising, web design and web development and much more, right? So we're gonna talk about resources on where you guys can learn a lot of these um, specific skills, but that's exactly what a digital marketing agency is, right? It's pretty much anything that's done online and a service that you can do online for clients to help them gain business or to build something or so on and so forth, right? Makes sense? Okay. So here we have different types of digital marketing agencies, right? We have a full service digital marketing agency, inbound marketing agency, an SEO agency, PPC, social media agency and a web design agency. Now, in our personal experience, we have seen that offering services in this ballpark makes sense, right? When you guys are starting an agency, keep your skills to maybe like four to five services, right? So you can offer web design, graphic design, SEO. But as soon as you guys start to offer like 10 services on your website, you immediately become diluted and you lose credibility and you don't really seem like a strong agency, right? So when you guys are starting digital marketing, just focus on offering a few services, right? So let me give you guys a real life example. 
Here I'm looking for digital marketing agencies near Las Vegas. This is actually gonna be very important later when we talk about how to get clients. You guys always wanna focus on local clients. You don't wanna focus on global clients because you're gonna be competing with huge corporations with like unlimited budgets, but we'll talk more about that later. So for example, I just randomly found this digital marketing agency, but I did check out their website before and I do like the services they offer. I am not a fan of their websites. I think their website actually needs a lot of work. To me, it just looks very bland and boring, but these guys actually have a lot of clients and they probably make a lot of money, right? I mean, I, I don't like this at all. Like this looks so old. I mean, this is like, ugh, really ugly, but whatever, who cares? As long as they provide a good service and their clients are happy, that's all that matters. Here at the top, we have services, right? We have web design, Google ads, SEO services, social media marketing, and hosting. But hosting is like pretty much like web design. So they pretty much offer four services, right? And these all correlate to each other because if they have a website, they need Google ads, right? If they have a website, they're gonna need SEO services. If they have a website, they're gonna need social media marketing. And also they could probably host it on their host where they can also get recurring revenue, right? So you do wanna create skills that correlate each other and don't get too out of whack, right? If you're a software company creating SaaS products, then you offer SEO services. It's like, you know, that's not really, they're kind of far apart, you know, and you want to keep it very uh, concentrated, right? So uh, I do recommend only having a few different services, okay? Now let's go back over here. All right, so those are the types of digital marketing agencies. Now, where to learn digital marketing? Now there are a few websites that you guys can choose, right? And to be honest, guys, digital marketing is not like, is not for rocket science. Anyone can learn it in just a few hours and just takes a little bit of practice. That's why all these companies, they just offer it as like a, a course because you can literally learn Google ads in a day or two days, right? If you really spend the time and effort, you can master any of these skills, right? So Masterclass. Masterclass is actually a website that offers a lot of professionals in the industry. There is also a new service by Google called Grow With Google. This is awesome. So Google actually offers their own certificates for a lot of digital marketing niches like digital marketing and e-commerce, project management, UX design, IT support, data analytics, and so on and so forth. They do have a lot of different um, careers that you guys can follow, and you guys do get a certificate from Google, which is pretty cool. They also do offer like an ads, an AdWords course as well. So if you guys wanna learn like Google AdWords, they have this new uh, program called Grow With Google that can give you certificates from Google, and that looks really, really good, right? You guys can also use other websites like Coursera. All right, so you can pretty much learn anything, right? I mean, there is so much that you guys can learn, right? Like digital marketing, right? I mean, digital marketing, digital marketing specialist, and a lot of these are from people with a lot of knowledge or some sort of experience, right? That's why I think Coursera stands out from other websites because there are websites like Udemy and Skillshare, but looking at the teachers, they're like all in like their early 20s. These guys are just doing it to make money. And if they can convince someone, you know, they're gonna buy their course, right? So this is another website and this is Udemy.com. Now Udemy.com is kind of a hit or miss. Sometimes you guys will get uh, good content creators who make good courses and then others will actually know nothing about the topic and they're just like teaching a course to make money. Like for example, YouTube. A lot of these guys talk about how to make YouTube channels and they don't even have a YouTube channel to back it up, you know? So if you guys do pick a creator, um, check out their backgrounds, check out their websites, check out the information about them to actually see if they have something to back it up with, right? So uh, yeah, Udemy is also a pretty a uh, good resource on where to learn digital marketing. So we also have Skillshare, LinkedIn Learning, which is pretty cool, Udacity, Skillshop by Google, right? So you guys can go to any of these websites and learn digital marketing. I also do have a six hour web design course that is completely free that will show you guys how to start a successful web design business and make over 100K a year. We actually do uh, show clients in this video that pay like ten dollars to $20,000 per job of web design. It's, it's really amazing. So if you guys do wanna check this out, I will leave that in the description of this video. All right, next. So let's talk about 
digital marketing itself, right? And ask these questions and answer them. So what value are you bringing, right? As a digital marketing agency, you need to provide value for your clients. If you're just doing this just to make money, people are gonna catch on and you're gonna quickly get one star ratings and you're gonna destroy yourself. So make sure that you guys do have something of value to bring that is worth money, right? Make sense? What problem are you solving? So whatever service it is that you guys are offering, make sure that you guys can actually solve that problem. For example, if they need more money um, from you know Google, then you guys can run Google ads and make them more money, right? But again, just make sure that you can actually make them money and that you're actually making your clients ha happy. That is the number one factor when starting a digital marketing agency, is just make sure your clients are happy. That's all that matters. All right, what is your target audience? This is very important and this also correlates to branding. So if you guys are targeting low ticket clients, that is fine, but you need to represent yourself and present yourself as a business that can get low ticket clients. If you are an agency that focuses on very high ticket clients, then you need to make yourself presentable as a business that can get high ticket clients. For example, Mercedes Benz is a uh, brand, you know, that actually focuses on high ticket clients. And then you have brands like, I don't want to pick on anyone here, Toyota, right? They're for like lower income people and that is their audience, right? So it doesn't really make anything better or worse. It's just picking uh, a target audience and sticking with it. Why are you different? They're going to hear the same thing a thousand times. We're a digital marketing agency that can get you money, yada, 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 like super boring, right? A good thing to make you guys different is try to build a brand and an audience, right? Just like you guys are watching this video on a YouTube channel, you can see that I'm providing value and that I'm different than other influencers or YouTubers. So you starting a business, you need to make yourself stand out and try to build an authority. When you guys build an authority, it makes the world of difference, right? I would rather listen to someone that has like big money and a big business that can teach me how to run a business versus a university course, right? I would rather learn from the big guy, right? So uh, yeah, just make sure to incorporate that of why you are different. How will you market? We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but um, a marketing plan is the second most important aspect of your business. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind, but I will be helping you guys market your business a little bit later in this video. These questions together will correlate your branding, which leads us to our next section, which is branding. Now, I showed you guys how to make the website earlier, right? But we just used a bunch of really nice templates. We used a bunch of gradients and made it look really cute and nice. But who really are you, right? And this is where the psychology of the brand comes in. So just to give you guys an example, right? We have companies that are red, and this involves passion, excitement, and companies like Coca-Cola use red, right? And also Virgin Mobile or Virgin where uh, they just provide a sense of urgency, right? They want you to buy their product. That's why they are red. And then you have yellow, which is joyous, which is energy. And these are used for optimism, right? And then we have blue. Blue is all about trust. You're gonna see every single social media company is always blue because they want you to trust them because then they take your information and they sell it to a bunch of marketers, right? So uh, that is why every uh, social media website is always blue. And also that is why a lot of tech companies are also blue as well. It's just something that brings trust to the human brain. I don't know why, it's just how we're engineered, right? And then we see green, which is freshness, growth, and safety. And this is generally for brands who want to focus on something more subtle, like you can see Starbucks and Whole Foods and other green brands that want to uh, present themselves in this specific manner. So picking a color is very important when selecting a brand, right? So again, we talked about like Mercedes Benz, how they're silver and how they focus on uh, very large ticket clients. And then you got companies like McDonald's or um, just lower end companies, right? And their color is like yellow and red and they're focusing on lower income people and that is fine, right? I mean, McDonald's is still like a multi-billion dollar corporation, but they have picked their audience and they know their audience, right? So when you guys are actually, um, you know, finding a brand to go with, just understand the colors are also very important uh, when you guys are starting a digital marketing agency, right? So 
your branding will change your price and marketing. So truly, depending on what color that you guys pick, this should change how you present yourself and also what you're gonna charge to your clients. And here's just some examples of the different colors, right? Red, excitement, orange, happiness, uh, black, power, elegance, death, mystery. You're gonna see a lot of like luxury stuff like Rolls Royce is like kind of black and gray, Mercedes Benz, Apple, right? They're all, they, they all carry that black and gray because that's more luxurious. And then you have companies like Android, which are for like lower ticket clients. I mean, not all of them. I don't wanna get in this whole debate about Apple versus Android, right? But you guys understand if you go to Android's websites, they use like green and blue and all these little playful colors. You know, they don't use silver, right? So those are just some things to consider uh, when you guys are um, starting your digital marketing agency. So pick a color that represents your business, right? Got it? All right, and fonts. Fonts are actually really important. The font I'm currently using here is Poppins. So um, here are some fonts I do recommend is Times New Roman, Playfair Display, Adobe Garamond, and Laura. Um, again, each of these fonts have specific meanings, right? So serif fonts, which doesn't have feet to an end, they usually reflect a modern look and feel and are associated with younger brands and companies. A few examples include Arial, uh, Helvetica, Railway, Lado, and Roboto. I actually use Railway, Lado, and Roboto on a lot of my projects, and a lot of uh, SaaS companies use that as well, right? So um, when you guys are picking your font, try to pick a few different fonts that correlate to your business. If you guys are gonna ask me right now which fonts would you guys go with, I would definitely go with Railway, Lado, Roboto, uh, Play for Display is good, um, and Poppins. Poppins Bold. This right here is Poppins Bold. I just feel like it's very friendly and easy on the eye, right? So that's why I stick with Poppins. And even on my website here, you guys are gonna see that um, this is actually done with Poppins. So we are using Poppins on my website, drillwilson.com as well. All right, so next let's talk about the examples I talked about earlier. Wix and Shopify, clients on a budget, uses a monthly fee, you get what you pay for, right? Wix, Shopify, you're not gonna get a large, big website, but you are gonna get a website, right? So uh, yeah, and then we have Apple, clients with larger budgets, but expect more, so they're gonna be more expensive. And you can just tell by looking at these brands with your own eyes, I don't even have to read this for you, you guys already know that these brands are gonna be expensive, right? So that's how the correlation of branding and color really reflects pricing for your agency, right? All right, next, let's talk about developing your services, okay? So the next step is to decide on what services your agency will offer. A few popular choices include web design, SEO, content marketing, digital marketing, social media ads, and email marketing. Do not offer too many services. The biggest problem with this approach is that customers will feel that your service is not for them because it's overwhelming. Just offer one to three services. We did talk about you know offering just a few services and the less services that you offer, the more professional and experienced that you guys look. We have found that when we find agencies with like 20 different type of niches, it just looks like it's not legit, right? It almost looks like a scam and stuff like that. So do just focus on a few different services. A good example, if you are a web designer, you can offer SEO packages to come along with their websites. Makes sense. A bad example, if you are a digital marketing agency, Offering a computer repair service package, movie services, and a script service would be a bad example, right? So I have seen actual web designers offer like video production and script services. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, who are you? <laughs> you know, like it gets lost when you offer that many services. All right, makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Okay, so now that we talked about the different services and we talked about things to look out for, we need to talk about pricing. Pricing is actually gonna be a very big part of your business because we need to understand how to properly price your services, right? And here are a few of them. And we're gonna go through this and give you my opinion on them. And then I'll give you guys my opinion on what's the best after this, right? So the first one is hourly, right? Most clients don't like this, but it's good for freelancer services. I personally hate paying people by the hour because I can't see what they're doing, right? And I don't know if they're on Facebook. I don't know if they're playing Smash Brothers. I don't know if they're playing Call of Duty. I don't know what they're doing, but they're just sending me a bill. And I'm like, you know, I, I guess I'll pay for this. So. 
Personally, I don't like hourly at all, but um, since I have a lot of video editors, hourly actually makes the most sense because we all don't know how many hours it's gonna take until the job is finished. So in that specific case, it makes sense, but in a lot of others, I just don't like it. Fixed, a good option for clients, but this might not be the best option due to scope creep. Now, fixed is a hit or miss because if you are charging the same price of a website for every single client, but you have one website that takes a lot longer than the others, that's gonna to lead to scope creep. Scope creep is when you have a project that takes a lot longer and larger than you originally anticipated in. As a result, you're gonna be working for free and wasting a lot of time on this project that has a low fixed rate, right? So that is one drawback with fixed rates. All right, next we have quotes. I love quotes and you guys should love quote too. A great way to present your services and explain why they are getting or why they're going to pay this quote. Now with quotes, people are gonna say, well, that's so expensive. Why is it so expensive? And I love that. I love it when they tell me it's expensive, right? Because that is the upsell opportunity. That is where you tell them why it's gonna be expensive. So for example, a website's gonna cost you around $4,000. I think that's a very fair price for a website, right? But a lot of people are gonna say, well, you know, why uh, Wix is offering $10 a month? Why is yours $4,000? And you're gonna say, well, it's because we use state-of-the-art builders. Your website's gonna be fully optimized. Your page is gonna load at 99% on Google PageSpeed Insights. We're gonna have an SEO package that's gonna boost you to the top of the website. We also have world-class designers that is gonna make you stand out from your competitors and people are gonna love your website. You are gonna look so professional. It's gonna be amazing. And as soon as you say that, they're like, uh, uh, oh, oh my God, oh, done, sold, <laughs> you know, just sold, right? And that is why you want to uh, tell them that. You want to explain the difference of why your services are better versus companies like Wix. And you can tell them, you know, guys, we've seen a lot of repeat customers with Wix come to us because they get, uh, they, they're held hostage by their plans. They don't own their domains. The websites are really clunky. It's hard to use the builder. That's why they come to us. In fact, we are Wix's number one uh, uh, customer, or I'm sorry, we are a number one agency that gets all of the clients that are not happy with Wix. You know what I'm saying? So it gives you opportunity to sell your services, right? So quotes, amazing. Monthly, great for most digital marketing agencies. 50 to $99 a month seems to be the sweet spot. Now I am talking about some agencies, right? Not all of them, right? So SEO services can be something like a hundred bucks a month, right? Um, Google ad subscriptions, uh, PPC subscriptions, all of those different subscriptions can be on a um, monthly uh, price because that makes the most sense, right? Now that's just an example, right? But uh, things like PPC, uh, social media marketing, SEO, those are more monthly subscriptions uh, and not really for like web designers or SaaS products or um, graphic design and stuff like that, right? So it only works for specific niches, right? All right, whoops. All right, I'm gonna scroll down here. Whoa, 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 sorry, sorry about that. We, 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 we jumped ahead, okay? All right, oh, really quickly. So we actually have this video right here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this video, all right? So this also is a web design pricing guide video on how much you should charge your customers. And right here, we talk about web design and we go through like flat fixed rates. We go through all the different pricing options. It's about 15 minutes long. So if you guys do wanna watch this, I will leave this video in the description below of this video. All right, okay. Uh, next, choosing a legal structure. Now, as a agency, right, um, you guys need to pick a structure. Now, most of you guys starting out, mostly will start on a sole proprietorship. Now, I myself started as a sole proprietor, right? And a sole proprietor is basically, um, you are your business, right? So your personal assets are tied with your business assets. And the reason why most people start as a sole proprietor is because you got nothing to lose, right? I mean, not I didn't, right? I mean, I was working out of my apartment and I'm like, what, what, you wanna sue me? I got, you know, a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, that's, that's all you're gonna get, right? And also it has a lot less fees and you pay a lot less um, to the governments because you don't have to pay for LLCs, you don't gotta pay for uh, articles of incorporation, and you don't have to pay for all these other legal fees that the state requires. Um, so that's what I personally started. 
And once I got larger, I started as a S corporation, right? And an S corporation does have some small benefits as far as taxes. And then later I actually changed my business to an LLC with an S election. So now I am an LLC, but I'm getting taxed like an S corporation, right? So uh, you guys can also go to a website. Let me go ahead and give you guys an example here of LegalZoom. So LegalZoom is where I actually incorporated my business and they're a great service, right? And you guys can actually get legal advice from these guys. These are, uh, there are lawyers here that will actually give you guys legal advice. They can tell you all the ins and outs because I can't really give you guys legal advice. I can't be like, well, if you go with this one, then you can do that. It's like, yeah, I'm not a lawyer, right? I mean, I was going to be a lawyer, but I mean, I went to law school, but I just uh, found YouTube instead. Anyways, so uh, here they have different type of businesses, right? We have the LLC, the corporation, nonprofit, and sole proprietor. And they talk about what it does. Like for example, limited liability protection. I did talk about how sole proprietors are liable for everything, right? And with LLCs and corporations, you are only liable for what the corporation has made. So they cannot come after your own money, not unless they pierce what we call the corporate veil. And that's where basically you send all the money from your uh, your accounts to your business and you don't uh, do it the right way. Uh, they can pierce the corporate veil, but that's like, you know, that's 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 not for us, okay? We're a bunch of, uh, we're a bunch of law-abiding citizens, right? So here you can see they have a bunch of, you know, pros and cons and what they include, what they don't include. So I will also go ahead and leave a link to this website as well in the description below of this video. And this website can get you uh, started and help you guys form your LLC or S Corp or C Corp or whatever business it is that you guys want to start. All right, okay. So next let's talk about hiring help. Now there is a lot to talk about here and um, even myself guys, I made tons of mistakes starting out, right? So hire help. When you guys first get started out with your agency, you might not be able to handle all the workload yourself. But as you grow and you get more clients, it's a good idea to hire help. This will free up your time so you can focus on marketing and promotions while your freelancers handle the client's workload. Get a virtual assistant with a new slash good rating. Do not go for top rated freelancers or companies. Let me repeat that again. Do not go for top rated freelancers or companies. Now, you guys might be asking yourself, why, Daryl? I thought I want the best of the best. Well, one of the big issues is top-rated freelancers don't give a crap about you, and they charge a lot of money, and they don't really have any sort of allegiance to your business. You wanna actually go after someone that can actually help you and grow with your business and learn the company culture. So, for example, over here, we typed in SEO, right? So we are gonna uh, find someone that can do SEO for our company, right? Now, one thing also about freelancers, the whole term of outsourcing, it still is alive, right? You guys can outsource to websites in the Philippines and other websites. I will be talking more about resources in the resources section of this video, right? But. A lot of these guys want huge, huge wages that are actually like surpassing American wages. Like for example, this guy in Ukraine wants $35 an hour. You know, that is like something that not even people in America charges that much. So me personally, I want to go from freelancers that actually are affordable, but can also grow with my company, right? So what I do here is I click on rising talent. Okay. Now, a lot of these guys are a lot newer, like this guy, 50 bucks an hour. It's like, no, dude, we're not paying you that money, right? India, 10 bucks. Here we go, $7.50. Now, I know you guys are thinking to yourself, well, if it's cheaper, it's probably not better. And that is completely false. I mean, you can find freelancers for uh, $8 an hour that'll do great services, right? Now, the reason why, again, I recommend to go after guys like this is because these guys right here are new to Upwork and they're trying to make a name for themselves. So for example, you know, we, we can scroll down over here and we have Monica over here that has some experience, right? She's earned $2,000 and her rate is $7 an hour. Now working with Monica, I would be more inclined to work with this person than someone who's charging $50 an hour, right? Because obviously it's gonna be very expensive and all they really care about is making money. 
I want to focus on a partnership. I want to focus on someone that I can build a relationship with long term. So we have someone like Monica, right? We also have uh, this person here, eight dollars an hour, but they are part of a company, and I don't like that. And me personally, I try to skip those people because they have more allegiance to their own company than they do to me. I want to build a relationship with someone that I can work with for a very long time, right? And that is my personal strategy, and it's worked wonders. My own partner, I pay him around twenty-five hundred dollars, and he manages all of my YouTube channels. He does all of the businesses, the emails, all that stuff for $2,500. He was working on Upwork for $10 an hour before, and that's what I was paying him. But since we built such a long relationship, now he does everything for me at a really, really good price, right? So um, for example, let's just go ahead and just you know go through one more. So rising talent. Now you guys, I mean, my personal experience is I don't want someone with zero experience. I want someone with some experience, just a little bit, right? Look at this guy, $9,000, $6 an hour. I would personally give this guy a holler saying, hey bro, you have experience, you've made some money, you understand the business, cool. You have a good rate, do you wanna work for my company, right? And then from there, you guys can build a relationship. So when entering the world of freelancers, it's really easy to get screwed because a lot of these freelancers, they charge obscene, crazy rates. I mean, for SEO, I mean, charging like 50 bucks an hour, me personally, I don't think like a guy like this right here, I don't think that he has enough to offer me because he's not offering me a cheap rate, right? He is offering me a very high price. And me personally, I don't think that me hiring him is beneficial versus hiring someone like this because if this guy messes up or something, it's like, who cares? It's eight bucks an hour. But if this guy messes up, it's $35 an hour. It's four times the price. In fact, this guy's actually amazing. $8 an hour, 100K earned, 94% job success. Congratulations, uh, what's his name? Anil, Anil, congratulations. So that's who I would go for. So when you guys are looking for freelancers, um, focus on people who are going to the top and building a portfolio, but do not get top rated clients or people with a large amount of money earned because they are less likely to build a long-term relationship with you. All right, so that is my personal uh, experience and that's what I recommend you guys do, okay? In fact, I think right now I have another guy from India I pay him around 700 bucks a month, my manager 2,500, and then we have a content writer which we pay around $600 a month as well. So um, I am providing them with a stable career and at the same time, competitive rates, right? So it works for me and everyone's happy, right? So yeah, you know, congratulations. So that is my main uh, advice is do not go for people that are really highly rated that want a lot of money uh, go for people who can build with your brand and you guys can grow a relationship with. Um, that is much better, right? All right. Next, let's talk about contracts and proposals. All right. Guys, always have a contract. People are going to try to screw you. This is business, right? And that's just how it is, right? You're going to get a bunch of clients. And since we're in the digital space, guys, getting screwed is actually really easy. I mean, someone could just call their bank and saying, Hey, um, Chase, you know, I don't know who Daryl Wilson is, you know, um, I want you to charge this back. If you guys don't know what chargeback is, let's read it. So a chargeback is when a customer calls the bank and says the charge was either not recognized, fraud, or the company failed to offer their services. So if I build someone a website, right? If I build you a website for $4,000 and then you call the bank and you're like, Hey, uh, uh, Wells Fargo, I don't know, uh, this website they provided me, it was just like a blank template and the website's dying and I got scams. Can you guys uh, charge it back? The bank will probably say yes, right? Not unless I, as the seller, have some sort of documentation or proof that they actually agreed to this and the website is actually online. So that's why you guys always wanna have contracts and uh, proposals, which we'll talk about. So just remember to have a contract when entering the space of digital marketing. Now let's talk about proposals, right? You guys need to look professional. So you gotta have a proposal, right? So uh, DocuSign is a great way to get users to sign contracts. PandaDoc is also a good, a good way to get users to sign contracts. Now a proposal is basically a proposal showing them what you're gonna do, 
um, all the services, the price and everything that comes with it, right? So I do have a video that shows you guys how to create proposals. Um, this video is about 20 minutes long, right? And what it does, it talks about what you guys need to include in the proposal, like how to introduce yourself, how to reach clients, the timeline, give them example works. So you want to reinforce them, right? This is your time to shine. So you want to show them works of what you can do. You want to um, just tell them exactly what they're going to get. And this proposal is also going to be protection for yourself. There are some pros and cons. And in this video, uh, I do actually cover it. We actually do walk you guys through a real proposal right here. And we talk about the proposal structure, what's included in the proposal, and also why it's very important to have a proposal, right? So um, I actually walk you guys through how to actually create one. You can see here that I am actually showing them like my branding, right? We have the introduction, the about us, and we give you a real life example of what a proposal is. So if you guys do wanna watch this video, I will leave a link to this video in the description. It is very important to have a proposal, right? So make sure that you guys always include it. Now today, proposals are actually becoming a lot more like contracts. So the proposals sort of merge with contracts as well because in proposals, you guys can get digital signatures. So I personally recommend going to websites like DocuSign or Proposable.com. Now, the reason why I like these websites is because, again, it's a proposal of what they get, but it's also getting that e-signature. The e-signature is critical when trying to fight uh, chargebacks. So if you guys have the e-signature from them and they say that it was fraud, you can actually uh, disprove that claim by showing them the proposal slash contract with their signature. So I do recommend going to proposaldoll.com. It's a great website if you want um, high quality proposals and you guys can also uh, send it directly to their email where they can e-sign it. Also, you guys can use DocuSign. DocuSign is also a great company that has really good proposals. And notice here how they always say e-signature. I mean, everyone's talking about e-signature because you wanna get that signature so you can protect yourself and your business. That signature, guys, is gonna save you thousands of dollars from clients who try to backstab you, right? And unfortunately, that's just how it is. Sometimes clients, they're just not happy with the services and they wanna charge it back. So uh, use those websites to create some really amazing proposals slash contracts for your digital marketing agency, all right? And make sure the user signs the documents, helps win cases, right? Makes sense? Okay, proposals. So I just showed you guys that I do have a video. It gets a signature and payment if possible, right? So when you guys do send a proposal, get the it signature, right? Don't send two different documents. So I hate the whole going back and forth limbo where you're sending them a document, they send it back, you send something else back. It's like, I hate it. The going back and forth is one of the worst things ever. So make sure that you guys do send everything in one shot. So now let's talk about payments, right? If you guys do decide to take on clients and also pay freelancers, you guys need a payment merchant service. Now here is a few, and I'm gonna give you guys my personal opinion on these ones right here. Now the most popular one and the easiest one to use is probably PayPal and Stripe. Now with PayPal, PayPal has increased their fees on a lot of services and they're making things just more difficult for me personally. They always block my account. They want me to call and verify transactions and they do have a lot of security um, issues when it comes to holding payments and stuff like that. They are a very secure merchant, but I find that they just become a hassle because um, they're too secure and they always wanna block your account and you gotta call. It, it is really annoying to going back and forth with PayPal, but that's just how they are. The other one is Stripe. Stripe is probably one of the best payment merchants out there. I personally use Stripe and they actually have a database that actually blacklists a lot of like clients who have a really bad record in the digital marketing industry. Um, I use it for my website, durablesen.com. We accept payments with Stripe and everything's great. You know, they send me payments. Um, it's automatic. They send it to my bank account. And for those of you who send out invoices, um, you can use Stripe as well. PayPal, you can send out invoices as well. So you can use either or. And then we also have your website, right? So obviously you might want to put these payment merchants on your website. You can use an integration with WooCommerce. I have a video on like how to start an e-commerce website. 
um, and also how to take payments. And I'll leave that in the description below. But we use WooCommerce and then we basically link it up with Stripe and PayPal. And then we just give them a virtual product, right? So you can go that route. You know, if you don't want to send out invoices, you can just have them purchase something on your website if you do want to go that route. Uh, another service is Payoneer. I personally don't like this service. Um, I use it for my partner, but I just don't like it. But for people in the Middle East and also parts of Africa, I do believe it is like one of the new preferred methods of payments because um, it has less restrictions. But I just find that whenever I'm making an account, I I, I don't know. I just don't like it. I, I don't know why. It's just you know, it's just it's just me. <laughs> you know, just, I'm just biased here. You know, um, so you guys can use PayPal to pay your freelancers, uh, Stripe as well. And you guys can use Payoneer. You guys can also use Wise.com. Now, if you guys do have uh, freelancers that are working globally in other countries, I highly recommend Wise.com over PayPal. The reason why is because Wise actually gives the correct uh, conversion rates for the currency and PayPal, they'll give you like 10% less. So they do charge a lot more when it comes to currency conversion. So if you do have um, freelancers that you're working with, I would recommend wise.com. Now this is not to accept payments. Okay. If you're going to accept payments from clients, I would recommend PayPal, Stripe, Payoneer, or your website, right? Also crypto. I do actually send USDT and stable coins to my manager sometimes. So sometimes there is an issue with one of the payment merchants. Sometimes they want ID verification and these things take time, you know, and I don't want to hold them up. Right. So I will use crypto, but I don't use any crypto that can fluctuate. So if it's in like Ethereum or Bitcoin or one of the shit coins, I'm not going to use any of those coins because it can lose value when I send it to them. Right. If I send them four thousand dollars worth of Ethereum. Right and I click on sends, it can fluctuate to $3,800 and they lose 200 bucks. I mean, this is possible and this does happen. So personally, if you do send crypto, just use stable coins. You can use USDT, DAI, USDC coin. I think USDC coin is actually my preferred method right now, but that's what I use to um, send payments for my freelancers that I work with. All right, business operations. So again, you guys can offer all these services or you guys can white label or resell these services. A reseller is when you hire a company to do the service for you and then you charge a customer for that service. This is very similar to drop shipping, but we call this drop servicing, right? Now there are several websites that offer reseller services. So I just did a quick Google search and typed in SEO reseller services. And what this is, is there is a bunch of websites and what they'll do is they basically white label everything. That's where they put on your logo. They do all of these services and then they charge you. And in return, you charge your clients and then you can take the cut of whatever's left. Um, this website right here, I have used SEO reseller. I actually do have an account here. So I'll go ahead and just log in really quick. So this is SEO reseller. And again, this is just one of the resellers that you guys can choose, right? And what these companies do is they're a white labeling service. So what they do is they do all the SEO work or web design. They create all the reports, the analytics in a really nice clean format. And you can give that to your clients. Now, what you do in return is you see here how it says like upload your logo here. Uh, you would give them the access to this account and they would see your company. So all this will change up here, like your logo and it'll look like your business. So over here, you can see that they have a lot of different packages, right? They have social media packages, uh, SEO packages, SEO services, content marketing plans. And what companies like this do here is they will do all of the content writing, the social media, they will be your entire business. And all you do is you basically uh, refer them. So you're just the middle person here. These guys do all the work, you charge the client, and then you take the difference, right? That is one route you guys can go if you guys feel like um, you don't wanna do all of the work. I mean, personally, I think this website charges a little bit too much. I have used them in the past for SEO, but like their, their SEO can be a little expensive. So here is the local SEO packages. And this is something that you guys can recommend to your clients. 
a, my website is a little slow, guys. It's not the, the website. It's because I'm on a VPN because I'm in Asia. And if I were to take it off, it recommends everything in Thai. <laughs> you know, so sorry, my bad. But here you can see that we have different, uh, several different local packages. They have a local booster. And what this will do is we can click on more, learn more about it. They have the SEO Prime, which is 30 keywords. And then they have 20 keywords and so on and so forth. So they have all these different packages and you guys can basically pick a package. Like for example, you can pick the local booster for 50 bucks a month and then just build your clients like $150 a month, right? And that's how you would make money. And it's great because they get their uh, website seen locally, right? So they can boost their websites and everyone's happy, right? So don't think like you're ripping them off or don't think like, oh, this is a shady business practice. It's really not tons and tons and tons of companies white label and you know especially the seo companies i mean half the companies that are available in america they just outsource to india and they just have them do all the work right so um you guys can be a reseller as well uh there are so many websites out there that offer reseller services and i don't really have like one that i personally recommend um logo design, business card design, you know, email signature design, all this stuff right here, this all can be just um, outsourced and white labeled through uh, websites like SEO reseller. So reseller option is good if you guys find yourself overloaded with clients and you don't have enough time to invest in one, uh, you guys can always white label uh, your services, right? Here is some websites. We have SEO Reseller, AdWords Reseller, and also Vendosta. There are tons of them, guys, and I don't really want to recommend many out there because I've only really used a few, and I found that the services were mediocre, right? Like, they were good, but I did feel like I was, like, making them overpay. But remember, some companies truly don't care. All right, just remember that, right? So yeah, that's uh, that's some companies that you guys can check out. You know, I'll go ahead and leave uh, a link to these websites also in the description. But if you guys do want to check them out, this is Vendesta and this is the AdWords reseller. And of course, they all have different packages. So it really depends on what your uh, client wants. So you'll see here that they have digital advertising, listing management, web design, content services. But I mean, content I think is really going to get cheaper and lower because the thing is with the content writing is ChatGPT has really made a big difference on content marketing. And some people might disagree with that, but I think that the ChatGPT with content marketing is getting better and better. And I think these companies here are actually, um, they're overvaluing themselves now. They are like, no, no, we're still good. It's like, no, 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 I can do all this with ChatGPT. You guys gotta lower your price. So hopefully in the future, these companies will lower their price as far as content writing, but you guys can always um, resell content writing if you wanna go that route. And lastly, avoid scams. You're going to find out that there are companies that are wanna give you uh, $7,000, $8,000, right? And there are a lot of companies out there actually trying to scam digital marketing agencies. I actually was a victim, almost a victim at one point. Um, some company asked me if, they, if uh, I could build them a website and they immediately sent me like uh, a $4,000 check. And like, we didn't even go over like the full thing. They just sent it to me and I'm like, this is weird, you know? Essentially what these guys do is they give you a payment or a check and they ask you, uh, to send a little bit of it back. So they overpay you and then you send it back and then you do the work. What they do is they uh, contact the bank and say it was fraud and they charge it back. So they get the website and then they also get your personal cash along with that. So that is a very common uh, scam that a lot of these companies do. Um, here I do talk about it in this video where they overpay the original invoice. That is a very common one. Um, also bogus checks or random names. And me personally, when they use the term like kindly and dear as an American person, um, and they say that they're in America, me personally, I flag that as a scam because when I'm talking with clients or businesses, they don't ever call me dear or kindly. Usually people from the Middle East or India use those terms and that's fine. But if they say that they are American and they use those terms, I start getting very skeptical because that's not how we talk, you know? So. But um, yeah, that is my personal uh, take. If you guys do wanna watch this video, I do recommend it. 
we go through a lot of actual real scams. I think over here, we actually have emails here that are actually from scammers and they are trying to scam people. So uh, again, I will leave this video in the description and this is good to know just in case that you guys might get an email from people who want to pay you really large um, uh, payments for websites that you know they shouldn't be paying that much for, right? So make sure to always uh, look out for scams. And guys, there are some other things here, but uh, this is for the other chapters. So this was the business part of this video. Now in this part of the video, I really gave you guys uh, the rundown of how everything works, right? So again, let me just give you guys a an overview about this section again. So personally, um, when you guys get started out, get your foundation set, right? Find out who you are, what prices you're gonna offer, what services you're gonna offer, find freelancers, and then find um, find the groundwork, right? So you just want to make sure that going forward, you don't have to be like, oh crap, uh, who's our payment merchant? Or, oh, uh, what's our proposal? You want to make sure you have all this information before you even talk to clients, okay? Before you even market anything, right? That's why I save marketing for last because we need to first truly understand the business model of your digital marketing business. Let me ask you guys a question. You know, everyone's just focused on marketing and stuff like that, but if I were to bring 1 million visitors to your website tomorrow, how many of them will convert? You know, that's one question you might wanna ask and think about because people do get traffic and they don't get any conversions and they start blaming the traffic. And it's like, guys, this really could be your websites. I have seen so many websites that look absolutely terrible and they're like, I ran all these Google ads and I got all this traffic and then no one bought anything or called me. And it's like, yeah, look at your website. It looks like crap, <laughs> you know? So I'm just, I'm just giving you guys the, the real cold truth about all this. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything, right? Make sure that you guys have an amazing looking website, uh, get all of your promotional stuff, get your proposals, get your merchants, make sure your freelancers are ready, make sure your website is fully SEO optimized, make sure it's fast, and just make sure the groundwork is ready before you go to the next step. This is a very big common problem I've seen with agencies is they just rush stuff. You know, they, they have everything like half ass and then they just start like running Facebook ads. And it's like, no man, you know, create a pop-up on your websites, uh, ask them to sign up, get an email marketing thing going on, like really invest in the business and don't just try to just uh, spam your website on a bunch of different uh, forums because that's not the answer, right? So I hope this part of the video helped you guys out. I hope you guys understand uh, the essentials of running a digital marketing agency. So now that we talked about the business parts and um, all of the stuff that you need to know, now let's talk about the resources and things that you're going to uh, need and also websites you might want to know about and talk about just the general resources that are going to drastically help you running your digital marketing agency. All right, party people, on this part of the video, I'm going to give you guys all of the best resources to help you with your digital marketing agency. Now, you guys would be surprised on how many websites would make your life a lot easier and also services that can really streamline the process of running an agency. Now, we're going to scroll down here. Now, I know we already touched base on this one topic right here, but again, I just want to re-show you guys the courses where you guys can learn digital marketing. So again, Masterclass, Grow with Google, Coursera, Udemy, Skillshare, and these other websites. I will also leave these slides in the description of this video that you guys can go ahead and check it out. So these websites you guys can use to learn digital marketing and I highly recommend it, right? So now let's talk about actual websites that can really help you with the uh, process of running a digital marketing agency. Now, here are some websites and I'm gonna explain what they do and how they can really, really help you out. Uh, one of them is Open Phone. This is a great service because uh, this actually does everything from one location. This can actually give you guys numbers, people can text you, and everything is in a central hub here. So you'll see that you have inboxes, you have your team, uh, you can collaborate with people, and you also get phone numbers, right? Uh, I personally use this service because um, I give up my number and what they do is they spam my phone and they sell it. And what we can do here in response to that is get our own generated number and have them spam that number in this, you know, in that account. 
and we have full control over it, right? I do like this because it generates you business numbers, people can text you, and you can also collaborate with teams. So Open Phone is a great resource if you guys want to, you know, not give out your personal information. You know, I feel like today a lot of companies ask for all this info, they don't need it. And here are the pricing options. So you guys can pay for yearly or monthly, right? That includes a US phone number, a call to texting, voicemails, a call recording, all of this stuff, right? So you can record your uh, client's conversations. I mean, it really does help instead of just giving someone your phone number and then having them spam it and then they sell it to other people. And it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> you know, you don't want to go there, right? Open phone is great. Also, day viewer, you guys are going to find that you need some sort of manager, right? Or sorry, organizer. This is a great organizer. So what you can do here is you can delegate the tasks, know what deadlines are. And this actually really does help you guys stay organized. I actually use this one and also Evernote. I should probably put that on the list here. Now we're going to, we're going to do that. Evernote, evernote.com. So I actually use evernote.com um, to help me create scripts for YouTube, right? Uh, it's just like a pad, right? It's just like a pad that you guys can use. I'll go ahead and show you guys really quick. So here is Evernote. And on the left side, you guys can see that we have topics. And all I've done here is like create scripts for YouTube. Um, you guys can use this for email templates. You guys can use this for proposals. Um, you guys can use this for pretty much anything, right? But I mainly use this for scripts because on YouTube, you guys probably have seen a lot of the YouTubers. Everyone's on scripts today, you know? So for my introductions, I do use scripts, but for videos like this, the way I'm talking to you guys right now, I'm just, you know, winging it because uh, I, I mean, how long can I be on a script for? You know, it's just good for the introduction really. So you guys can use Evernote as well, right? And Zoho. That's a website where you guys can get a business email. So that'll make you look a lot more professional. You guys can also use like Google business email as well. And that will get it like, um, you know, hello at your website.com, right? It'll make you look a lot more professional than just using a basic Gmail account, right? I personally have used this once, but I actually do use the Google business uh, email and that's where they connect it with your website. And then you get a uh, domain email. So mine is howdy at darylwilson.com. You guys can do that with Google business email, or you guys can use it with zoho.com. Whimsical is actually a really cool pl platform. This allows you to, uh, it's pretty much like uh, Figma, right? It's Figma, but more simplified. So here you guys can see that we have different, um, you know, we have a lot of different topics and people can actually collaborate on this together. So this is actually for a video that I'm working on right here. So this is landing page strategies, right? And we basically go and talk about what a web page really needs, right? So we have uh, the call to action, the hero image, consistent design, and you can see that we're using this to really help people understand why we uh, create the landing pages the way they are, right? And what to include on a landing page. So here we have uh, the hero image, right? Uh, we have the call to action, a clean message or clear message, and we also limit choices. We just want one button to make them go where we want them to go so that we can convert, right? And then that below that, we have supporting the actual hero and so on and so forth. So over here, you guys can see that we also do have like uh, landing pages, right? So you guys can use this to showcase to clients saying, hey, do you guys like these landing pages? So over here, you guys can see that these are templates that we actually sell on our websites. And I mean, we can just show this to people and saying, hey, do you like these? Or what do you think of this project? And um, users right here can just take a look at it. You can upload images. You can uh, just write text right here. And you know, there you go. And then you can just obviously uh, make it bigger, right? So yeah, I mean, that's what we use this for. It's a great platform for collaborating. Also Slack. We actually do use Slack as well. So over here, I think we have Slack. Here, I'll go ahead and open it. Also Slack.com. Slack.com is a collaboration tool where you guys can collaborate with teams. So if you guys are working with other people and you want everyone to be in one central location, uh, most developers and most SaaS companies use Slack because you can collaborate everyone together instead of you know, uh, hey man, are you there? You know, calling them, like this makes everyone work from one central location, which is very ideal. Also Skype. 
Skype.com, I'm sure you guys have heard it. It is a service that you guys can use to call people and video call and stuff like that. Stripe and PayPal, those are very well-known payment merchants. PandaDoc and Proposable, we did talk about that. And those are just websites where you can create proposals and get that signature so people cannot charge you back, right? So these are very important when you guys are running your agency. And then for banks, you guys might be asking, well, you know, do you have any recommendations for banks? Well, you know, a very popular one is Alibank.com, also Capital One and borrowmoney.com as well. I personally use uh, Capital One. So this is my personal account right here. Um, they're good if you just want to, you know, have a checking account where uh, everything, you know, it's a business account. Um, I personally like them because they give you APYs and their savings. A lot of other banks like Wells Fargo, Chase, B of A, they don't give you any interest. And that is total BS because interest rates right now are really high. So what they're doing is they're pocketing your own money and they're keeping all of your interest. So uh, websites like Capital One do offer an interest for their checking. So that's why I went with them, right? So now that I talked about resources, let's talk about outsourcing websites. So where can you guys find cheap labor to um, you know, do specific tasks or uh, even build a partnership with a freelancer? So there are websites like mind sourcing, I'm sorry, microsourcing.com. And this primarily works with the Philippines. So this gets people uh, in the Philippines and you can hire them. They do have a lot of people that can work with you and your company. I personally, uh, my, my partner is Filipino. So, uh, you know, I do pay him very well. I don't want you guys thinking I'm like, you know, some terrible person or something. I mean, I pay him like three grand a month. He's doing really well in the Philippines. But if you guys are getting started out, you guys might want to outsource to uh, freelancers that are willing to work for a cheaper rate, right? And then also uh, outsource PH as well. This is another website you guys can use to get remote workers and offshore companies that are outsourced from the Philippines. The thing is about Philippines too is they actually have very, very good English. So uh, if you guys are working with a freelancer and there is some sort of communication disconnect, just know that um, the people that outsource from the Philippines speak really, really good English. And if you guys wanna go with something like India, you guys can use outsource to India and they have tons of companies. I mean, they have hundreds of different niches and they can help you guys out if you're trying to outsource and get uh, people to work at a very good price. Also Upwork, but guys with Upwork, you really have to do your research. Um, websites like Fiverr and Upwork are sort of dead for outsourcing because these freelancers are charging like $80 an hour or something. And it's just not practical. You know, like I don't care like where they're from personally, but if they're from a country where they're getting started out, like, you know, if they're from countries with lower wages, like Romania, Ukraine, Philippines, and India, and they're asking me for a hundred dollars an hour, I'm going to be like, no, like I'm going to go based off what your country is paying you. Now, once you guys get large and settled, there is another strategy. What you guys can do is you guys can actually go to those places physically and then you can hire within those countries because those countries have wages and those wages are very low. So you guys can use that to get a really good team organized and you know basically build your business. Right now, I am currently in Thailand and I do have a partner who sells on Amazon and he does like a million dollars in sales or something. And he actually moved here because he was living in Germany but the labor in Germany was, I'm um, sorry, the labor in Germany was just so high. He said, you know what? I think I can move somewhere else and get really cheap labor. So he actually has a team out here and he pays them about like 800 bucks a month, a team of like eight or you know nine people. He pays them the Thai wages instead of the German wages. So he's saving a lot more money in the long run and he hires locally. So he's hiring people in Thailand and paying them according to what the Thai government wants uh, people to get paid, right? So that is a good strategy. Once you guys are settled, physically going somewhere and hiring within those countries is a probably the best way to outsource um, labor, right? So that is just some strategies and recommendations. Also outsourcing websites, we have Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer.com, PeoplePerHour.com, Guru.com, 
And this is where I talked about finding people in those countries. You guys can also use indeed.com and also Craigslist. This is actually a really good way to find people within those countries. So over here, let's go to indeed.com. So if you guys do wanna outsource labor, you guys will need to use a VPN for indeed.com. And what you can do is you can actually go to those countries and look for specific tasks, right? So for example, over here, we have web design, right? And uh, for example, here we have a graphic designer and I'll go ahead and click on this. Now, 13,000 bot is about $300 a month. So these guys are getting a full-time graphic designer for about $300 a month, right? Um, over here, let's take a look at a web designer. And I know you guys can't read this. I can't read it. I can read some of it, but what I'm looking for here is the actual price. Uh, over here, right, so a full stack developer, uh, they're gonna charge around 40,000 bots to 120. So 40,000 bot is about $1,000 and 120 is about uh, 3,000. So they're looking for a full stack developer from a starting wage of $1,000. And a full stack developer is actually pretty expensive. So this is a strategy that you guys can use. You guys can turn on the VPN and look for people in specific countries, right? And um, a lot of people from India actually do that to get business in America. If you guys go on Craigslist and you put in like web design in like Washington or California, you're gonna get tons of people from India. So uh, they're doing the same thing in America. They're basically going to Craigslist and they're just trying to find business and people who need websites or services from Craigslist. So speaking of that, let's go to Craigslist. So here is the Craigslist for Thailand and here is a bunch of jobs. So right here, they're looking for a teacher for about $1,000 a month. Um, images, uh, rendering jewelry images, 20,000 to 25,000 a month, right? So a lot of this is digital work, as you guys can tell, and also teaching. Uh, teaching English is actually really, really popular in Thailand. Um, if you guys ever go to Thailand, most people speak English in Thailand. Um, in Bangkok, almost everybody does. So yeah, there's a lot of teachers in Thailand, but you guys can find a lot of jobs over here and hire them. Um, from different countries. So you guys can use Indeed or also Craigslist to outsource uh, labor and go directly to the source instead of using websites like Upwork and Fiverr. You know, me personally, I kind of frown upon it now because uh, those freelancers are getting really aggressive as far as their pricing. And I'm, I go there because I want a cheap price, but sometimes they just want way too much and it's just, it's unrealistic. And I think they're just basically looking for large corporations who don't care about money right? And those corporations want those freelancers because they don't want to hire someone in house because there's, you know, uh, personal liability insurance, workers comp. I mean, hiring employees in America is a lot harder. Um, and that's why people outsource because they don't have to deal with any of the bureaucracy of the American government. But I don't want to get too political here or talk about politics or the government. We're, we're here to make money, damn it. All right. So um, yeah, use these websites, right? And also here, outsourcing websites. This is for team organization. So if you guys are building a team, uh, this is where users can collaborate. So we have teamlymonday.com. This is actually a very uh, popular one. Uh, I was using monday.com because uh, my video editors were all uh, using that and we actually collaborated on monday.com and, and it is helpful, but it has a massive learning curve. So it's really not user friendly. And if you get started on, on monday.com, uh, there's gonna be a lot of things that you're not gonna understand. So you might have to do tutorials and learn how to use it. Uh, Slack.com, this is a great website. This is what I use. Whimsical.com, like I showed you guys earlier. Trello, this is a website where you guys can uh, create different boards and users can put those boards in different categories. Like for example, uh, we're starting this job. This one's almost done. These are finished. It is a pretty good platform for actually segregating uh, tasks and stuff like that. ClickUp.com is also another resource if you're looking for team organization, and it's very similar to Monday.com. And lastly, we have the outsourcing websites. These websites here are pretty much good for white labeling and also uh, reselling services. So UpWeb.com, go ahead and just give you guys a quick look here. So these websites are pretty much reseller companies. So what you can do is you can get some of their services and then you can white label it and resell it. Also websites like brafton.com where you can like hire uh, content writers, right? And you can resell everything where they'll basically do all of the work 
and you basically just you know provide that work to your clients and then everyone wins right so these are some outsourcing websites that you guys can choose as well again i will leave these slides in the description because i know there is a lot of websites here and uh, these websites can really help you out with your digital marketing agency and also just streamline the process in case you know sometimes you guys might have too many clients uh, you can use these websites they can do all the work and you guys can go from there so party people, hopefully this part of the video helped you guys out. Resources are critical for digital marketing success, right? If you guys have all of the good resources, it can really help you guys out. And don't be scared to use them. I know it can be a little tedious going to a website, registering it, making an account, booking a phone call. Like it, it is a lot of tedious work, but this is just part of the grind of starting a digital marketing agency, right? Um, use those resources, you know, go through those websites, see which one works best for you. And once you guys actually get all the resources, like you have a place for your team to work with, um, you know your business structure, you guys have your phone numbers ready, now we're ready to start marketing the business, right? So I made these, you know, I made these sections purposely. So the first part, the business plan, you know, we're good. Now you got all the resources, you got everything that you guys need to get going. So now we're gonna talk about how to properly market your digital marketing agency. So let's go to chapter four, and talk about how to market your digital marketing agency. What is up party people and welcome to the marketing section of this tutorial. So in this part of the video, we're going to be explaining how you can properly market your digital marketing agency. Now there's a lot of beginner mistakes and one of those beginners mistakes is people tend to try to compete on a global basis, which if you're just getting started out guys, you're not going to have any sort of money to compete against uh, global brands, right? But there is still a lot of business for you in the local section. So in this part of the video, I'll be explaining how you guys can get clients how you can drive traffic, and also how to get the word out about your digital marketing agency. You guys ready? All right, so let's go ahead and go through this list. And there are some things that I do wanna prioritize versus others. So let's go ahead and cover those topics. Now, the first thing obviously is creating social profiles. Now, when I say this guys, I actually mean going to uh, websites here and actually filling everything out. So if you guys are going to create a LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitter, you do want to go through this and you want to fill in as much information as possible. The reason why is because the more information that you guys enter on these profiles, uh, it gets picked up by search engines and then it actually shows in the results. Therefore, people can find your business a lot easier. Uh, over here as well, you guys will see that we have this uh, coffee website that I own and um, on this coffee website, you'll see that we have all of the information for the introduction. If we go to the about section, we have the uh, email, we have the backlink. That's actually critical, right? Get those backlinks from social websites. So you do wanna make sure that you guys fill out as much information as possible on your social media profiles because this does get picked up by the Google search results and your website will pop up here and there over time, right? Once you guys actually do create these social profiles, it's very important to engage in the community. Think about social media as like uh, how long you've been around, right? So for example, you'll see that we ha have posts right here, right? And we're consistent, you know, we post probably once or twice, once or twice a month, right? And when people actually go to your profiles, they don't really specifically might not like something or comments, but they're gonna go back and they're gonna see how long you've been in business. And this is like social proof saying, hey, we've been around for a long time. We have a large customer base. Therefore, we are a trusted company. So it's not really about like the likes and the comments, but it's more about social proof of how long you've been in business. And that is uh, why I always tell people to actually uh, create their profiles and then just post once or twice a week. Even if you get no engagement, just keep posting. Also, what I would personally do is I also like my own post right here, and you guys should also comment. I do that all the time on YouTube, and the reason why this is a good strategy to build engagement is because, um, got any questions? Here, so for example, if someone goes to a post and there's already a comment, they are more inclined to engage with that post. So for my YouTube channel, I always comment first because if they go to a YouTube video with no comments, it's kind of like no one wants to jump in the pool first. You know, they're like, I wanna wait for someone else to jump in the pool and then I'll jump in the pool. You know, then it's cool, right? So the same thing applies to the social media atmosphere where uh, people won't want to comment unless they see other people comment, right? So that is one strategy on how to build engagement. 
And don't feel like you're like a loser. You're, you know, oh, I comment on my own post. Guys, who cares? Business is business. You're here to make money at all costs, right? So again, make sure you fill out all social media profiles and post quite often. Next, focus on local clients, right? So uh, there are tons of people in your state or in where you live, and there are literally millions of people. I mean, if you look at the population of any states, in America, it's usually over a million, right? Like most states are usually over a million, except like Wyoming. Wyoming's half a million. Montana's half a million. And if there's any more, let me know in the comments below, right? But uh, my personal advice is you do wanna focus on local clients because it's cheaper to market and it focuses more on a denser audience, like you're narrowing your list down. There's no reason for you to uh, market to people in Maine if you are in uh, Las Vegas, right? It's like, what's the point of that, right? I can focus on local clients and make money here, right? Now, how do you guys get local clients? Well. Here is one of the biggest things that you guys all should do when starting a digital marketing agency is to make sure that you guys submit your website on Google My Business. Now, Google My Business is a website where you guys can submit your business and all your information. And this is very helpful because what this does is this will actually boost your website to the top of the search result if someone's looking for something uh, like a d designer or a web designer locally in their community. Google understands that it's better to recommend local businesses first than large corporate global brands because it's a lot easier to do business in local communities, right? So when you guys do decide to add your business to Google profiles and stuff like that, what happens is that it gets picked up by the search results. So let's take a look right here, right? Let me give you guys an example of how effective this is, right? So I put web designers near me, and that is a very common term. In fact, if you go to keywords, it's like one of like the like most search results for people who are looking for web designers, right? And if you scroll down right here, uh, I, I know I'm in Thailand right now, right? But you guys can see that it's recommending local businesses. So right here, it's recommending uh, this one web designer, we have this other one, and then we have this other one, right? So actually advertising on Google Maps is actually a great way on how to get more traffic because uh, here this is actually bumped to the top of the list and that's actually pretty cool. And here, if I click on more businesses, it's just gonna list all these businesses right here. So it's just gonna go to all the local areas and you want your business right here because you are more inclined to get business uh, from the Google Maps versus like SEO, you know? So your website will actually also uh, get pushed up in the search results. So you guys can see here that I'm looking for web designers and there is a lot of Thai web design companies, right? Now, if I were in America and I did the same search, it's going to recommend web designers in that specific community, right? So this is how you get found. And this is probably one of the biggest beginner mistakes is they don't list their business on Google uh, my business, right? Because looking through this list, there are zero American companies because I am currently overseas, right? So if I go to page two, you're gonna see it's only Thai companies, right? So it's not American companies. So make sure that you guys do enter your business on Google My Business. Also Google Maps. Now I do have a Google Ads tutorial and if you guys do decide to use Google Ads, you guys can actually advertise like I showed you on Google Maps and that is a great place to advertise. Same thing with Apple Maps. You guys should also submit your listing to Apple Maps as well. So when someone actually picks up their iPhone and looks for a specific business, your business will be located there. And I think today a lot of people use iPhones, right? So a lot of them also might use the Apple Maps. So make sure that you guys do also submit your listing to Apple Maps so that people can find your business. Um, like we talked about, advertising on Google Maps equals money. It's a great place to advertise. There's no reason for you guys to spend money on Google ads or uh, just, you know, Facebook ads. I mean, Facebook ads is good. You know, I, it's on my list here, but me personally, I would always go with Google Maps first because I think when people are searching for something, they are more inclined to go to Google first than Facebook. Facebook is like the loungy place. It's like where they go and they're chill. My personal opinion on Facebook, I feel like the quality of traffic there has dropped tremendously. I have a Facebook group and if you guys are my Facebook group, I love you guys, you know, but the quality of the traffic is just like really minimal. Like no one ever buys anything. 
there's a bunch of trolls in there, you know, they just troll me and just, you know, it's like, it's just a place where it's like, like you slum it, you know? So uh, anyways, so next we have uh, local listings. Now this should be one of the priority uh, places where you should market, right? A good example is Yelp, right? So here I typed in web designer in Las Vegas, and you're gonna see that it lists a bunch of digital marketing agencies for web design. We have this one right here, IP Media Consultants. We have this one right here, and it also lists them all right here on the map. Now, this is great because you guys can submit your listings to several different directory websites, right? Now, also, if you guys do go to fiverr.com, I understand if you guys are doing this, it gets very tedious, right? You guys can actually hire someone to just like post on like 50 different um, so I'm sorry, 50 different classified ads websites. Like for example, uh, this guy right here will post your websites on like 50 or something like that. And what you can do is you can actually build a relationship with some of these people and have them do it all the time, right? So you can like, you know, post on Craigslist, make sure that you put all of your information on Yelp and you know, any other directory website because those are free backlinks like yellow pages, white pages. They're free backlinks and it's just more exposure for your company, right? And um, yeah, so I do recommend finding as many directory websites as possible and listing your business on all of those websites. And then of course, there are the classified ads websites like Craigslist. There's a, there's a few of them, you know, um, I'm sure you guys might know of more, but one of the popular ones is Craigslist, even though that website looks absolutely terrible, it's a very popular one. So that's something that you guys want to work on, right? And if you guys do use like, again, classified ads, like um, Craigslist or any other classified ads website where you can post frequently, hire someone to just post every single day. Like there's no reason not to do it. Like you can pay these guys like a hundred bucks a month and they can post your business on like Craigslist like 20 times a day or something like that. Like you can find these people to do that and it's just more exposure for you. So get creative, you know, get creative, think outside the box. And I know people don't want to spend money on a, a, um, a virtual assistant, but I'm a big fan of it because I'm a lazy guy and I'd rather just give it to someone, pay them 100, 200 bucks and just walk away and uh, play Call of Duty, <laughs> you know, so, or PUBG or something like that, right? So anyways, then also we have the Facebook ads and Facebook ads is actually not bad particularly because you guys can market in specific areas, right? You guys can market on specific regions and that really makes Facebook ads effective. I feel like Facebook ads are more effective for brick and mortar stores and local businesses than websites. Like if you're a large scale e-commerce website, it's really hard to market your business with Facebook ads because you're basically hitting this huge reach and you have to do so much A-B split testing and demography changes, it's really tough. But if you are a local business, it's a lot easier to advertise with Facebook ads. And of course, if you guys are total noobs and you guys don't know how to use Facebook ads, I do have a video, it's about a year old, but it's still very relevant, where we uh, showed you guys how to actually uh, create Facebook ads. And during this video, we actually got leads from people who were actually interested in the ads. And I had to tell them, I was like, guys, um, uh, this is uh, it's going on a YouTube channel, it's not real. And they were like, oh, whatever, man. <laughs> you know, I was like, all right, you know, so uh, that was that. All right, so, and then also we have the next idea, which is reviewing companies and other places. Now, if you guys go over to Google, right? A good idea here is to actually review other companies, say, hey, you know, this is a great company. Um, you know, they have a lot of good uh, uh, corporate culture, uh, really nice guys over there. Try to build an alliance. You wanna build a team within the network. You don't wanna be that one black sheep that's ousted in the society. You wanna be that guy that actually keeps tabs on all of his competitors, kind of comments on them, they comment back on you and you guys can build a network, right? The reason why you wanna do that is because if they find you um, or they find them, they can also find you. So for example, over here, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these reviews right here. And what I personally do and what a lot of companies do is they actually hire someone to actually go on Facebook and LinkedIn and they comment on their competitors. They do that because they wanna draw the traffic back to their profiles. Essentially what you're doing here is you're building backlinks to your specific digital marketing agency, right? 
So what you guys can do, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys to spam your competitors, but what I am saying is to leave reviews right here, send them a message saying, hey guys, you know, we'll give you guys a positive review. Is there any way you guys can give us a positive review in exchange, you know, because we're in the same business and, um, you know, check out our services, rate it appropriately. And, you know, don't ask them directly to just give you five star, but just ask them if they can help you guys out, get started and stuff like that by giving you reviews. Check out your portfolio, get an honest judgment from them, right? And then go from there. So that is a strategy where you guys can review other companies. Also commenting on other companies on Facebook and LinkedIn is also a great way on how to extract traffic. Essentially, this is called spear spishing. No, I'm sorry, sphere yeah, no, spear phishing is when you actually go post on other places and you try to get the juice from them, but that's actually referring to viral posts. So for example, if there's like this huge, huge topic in America, like um, I, I don't want to mention anything, but let's just say something bad happens or something good happens and there's a lot of media attention, you can post, you know, you can comment on there, talk about your business and then try to get that traffic, right? So that's, that's what a lot of people do, right? So those are some examples. Now, Let's talk about big ticket clients. So enough of this little kitty stuff. You know, we want to upgrade. We want to get with the game. We want to actually find clients that are willing to pay 10, 20,000, $50,000. How do we find these clients? Well, you guys are in great luck because they're going to find you. There is a website here called Folio. And I actually was a subscriber on this website, but I canceled it because I don't have any need for it. But um, what you guys can do here is this website will actually send you guys qualified leads and they consistently send you guys tons of government agencies and companies that need uh, your talents, right? So the price right here starts at around $190 a month, but they will send you a library of leads and people who need the web design services or whatever service, right? Now, the great part is, is that this website actually compiled a huge list of government agencies, uh, organizations, and people with massive budgets. So for example, we have one right here that is offering a $500,000 project for a California website redesign. Wow. I mean, that is where the tax dollars are going. And you know, uh, the taxes are really high in the States. And let's be honest, States don't know how to manage their budget at all. And they spend recklessly. And this is an example. I personally think $500,000 for a website is ridiculous. I mean, that's half a million dollars. Like, why is it so much? But you know, whatever, you're the guy that's going to make the money. So who cares? Right? And then here they have one Californians for the branding and websites, Texas Association for the younger children. See, 25 grand. That's that's something that's doable, right? But these people will pay big budgets because it's not their money. They don't care, right? Here we have another one, twelve thousand dollars. Now, again, this is only one day uh, from this service. So tons of different niches that you guys can choose. And I actually have used this website and they have literally like hundreds of leads that you guys can pick from. So this website is a great website if you guys do want to find high ticket clients. And they actually have companies that all have deadlines, right? So you can see here, even on the example, all of these large corporate companies have deadlines. So don't worry about like spamming your information as fast as possible. You got plenty of time, right? Fill out your information, send them a great proposal and try to win that lead, right? So this is a great website if you guys do want to find high ticket clients. It's probably one of the only ones I've ever found on the internet. There are other ones, but they're like total BS, like, and they're not legitimate. This is the only legitimate one because I've actually looked up every single company that was quote, like, you know, needing a designer or something like that. And they all checked out. They were all real legitimate companies. Me and my partner even called a few. We were like, Hey, are you guys a scam? And they're like, sir, is this a prank call? You know? And I was like, Oh my bad. You know, I just hung up, you know? So, uh, yeah, folio.me. It is a great website. Uh, right here, I actually have a YouTube video. We hate them. And over here, you guys will see that we actually do have a lot of different um, examples of how to get more clients, right? So let me go ahead and scroll over here. See if I can see if I can find it or see, let's see here. Is it fully on me? Yeah. So, so right here, you guys can see that this is the actual dashboard. So I did have an account at the time, but I canceled it because it was expensive, but they have just tons and tons of leads 
and they have it for web design, developments, like all the topics. It's a really helpful website, right? So you're welcome. You're welcome. So tell, tell me, tell me, thank you in the comments for that, guys, because that's a hidden gem right there, right? All right. Next, also, we have content marketing. Now, like we talked about before, if you guys are doing content marketing, guys, it's important to create topics around businesses. There is no reason why you should be like, we are the best web design company. We are the best designing company. Top 10 things designers need to know. No, we don't want to market to um, we don't want to market to people in our industry. We want to market to people that are looking to get started. Here's a great example. This is Shopify.com. They offer really crappy templates and they have really ugly websites, but they are a very large successful company regardless because they have really, really good content. Here is an article about how to start an LLC in six easy steps. Now, why would Shopify write about an LLC, right? They're not a legal firm. You know, these people are not lawyers. They know nothing about it, but what they're doing is they're saying you first name your LLC and then you can link it up with your store. So it is connected, right? Because if they are looking for an LLC, they're also looking to start a business slash looking to start a website. So you want to pick topics like how to start an LLC, how to build a logo, how to plan your business strategies, how to market your business. You know, there's so many different topics that relate to businesses that you want to focus on, right? So make sure that you guys do create uh, content around businesses getting started and use ChatGPT. ChatGPT is amazing, the best thing ever, right? Here we have Google My Business. I did talk about how you guys should register your agency for Google My Business. Yelp and directory website, we did talk about that, right? So make sure that you guys submit your agency to as many listings as possible. Chamber of Commerce and Neighborhood Councils. Did you guys know that your city, wherever you're living in America, has a neighborhood council and they get funding from the government? And this funding is spent on a ridiculous, I mean, it's spent ridiculously. We, uh, I have a friend actually in California and he was on the Los Angeles Neighborhood Council or one of those councils and they were like gonna pay like $30,000 for a statue or something like that, you know, to be in one little like, like park or something. I'm like, you're gonna pay 30 grand for a statue in a park? Give me that money, man. Like the park, the, the park is cool, you know? So these uh, neighborhood councils and chamber of, uh, chamber of Commerce, they do have tons of funding and they want to actually help local businesses like yourself. Let me give you guys an example. So over here, we have the Santa Clarita Valley. I love Santa Clarita, it's a beautiful town. I uh, lived there for you know 10 years, it's a great place. And this is an example, it's a city in Santa Clarita, right? And here you'll see that they have a bunch of partners, right? But more importantly, if you go over here to directory, they have a directory of uh, companies here. And a lot of these are local businesses, right? So right here, 95 Visual, a digital marketing and web development firm located in Santa Clarita, servicing the SoCal area and beyond. And what is great here is they got a backlink from a very popular website. And a lot of people go to these websites because they want to work with someone locally, right? And it looks like this website actually got my idea and is doing exactly what I'm saying because um, let's go ahead and click on contact here. Oh, look at that. It goes right to their, uh, it goes right to a contact form. So now it goes to this page. And I guess this is just like learning more about the business. I don't think this is actually, oh, here's the website right here. 95 visual. All right, cool. And here you go. So it looks like, uh, they can just go ahead here and get a website. Uh, this website looks a little weird. Uh, this whole border radius thing. But the border radius thing looks a little weird, but nah, I don't know. You know, we'll see. You know, we'll check them out. All right. So what I am saying is, you guys should go to these neighborhood councils and chambers of commerce here, and any council within the city as well. So here they have a government affairs council. Uh, all these different councils, you guys can go to all those councils within those cities, say, hey guys, you know, we're a local business and we want to go ahead and introduce ourselves to the community. And, you know, we're a agency and we offer this in X and Y and we would like to know if you can help us grow as a business. They're gonna be more inclined and happy to help you guys grow your business, right? Don't think like you're spamming, right? These guys' main job is to help the community. So you guys are paying taxes for that. So damn it, go to these guys and get some get some of that money back, <laughs> right? So again, a Chamber of Commerce and Neighborhood Councils, every single city has one. So go to those um, organizations and submit your listing to those websites. Also attend meetups. 
So here is meetup.com and they have a lot of meetups that you guys can attend here where you guys can go ahead and go to these meetups and introduce yourself to other people. Um, I personally think that going to like uh, uh, places where they're trying to connect is probably the best place. You wouldn't want to go to like board games and be like, hey guys, we're a web design agency. They're going to be like, yeah, dude, we don't really care. <laughs> you know, so uh, make sure that you guys do go to um, meetups that pertain to your niche, right? Create video content for social networks, build an authority. This is actually a great topic because when you guys see someone that actually has a lot of videos or content around a specific field, you are more inclined to hire them. I believe it's like 70% more likely or something like that to hire someone. Now here's an example. So here is youtube.com and we are looking for Las Vegas real estate. Now, just because you're a local business, don't think that like, oh, you know, my audience is so small, people aren't gonna watch me, guys, that is total BS. This guy right here is only marketing to Las Vegas, which the population is like a few million people, right? But these videos are getting 50, 60, thousand views, right? So what they're doing here is they're just marketing to one small area, right? So what they're doing here is these guys are real estate agents and they're trying to basically uh, sell houses, right? And, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know anything about these houses, but it looks like here they're just trying to, they're just trying to sell the house, right? And they're using YouTube as a, um, as a resource. And I guarantee you, if they got 50,000 views on this one stupid house, it probably sold, right? So this one video probably made this guy, I don't know, $10,000 in commissions, right? So what you guys can do here is you guys can go ahead and talk about whatever it is that you wanna talk about in a specific community because um, I think that actually will make people in your local area trust you a lot more, right? And here, look at this. You guys might even get picked up by like Channel 13 News and they might wanna bring you in for an interview. There are so many ways on how you guys can just connect with random people. I mean, I get interviewed by a lot of people and I get requests all the time for interviews, but you know, guys, I just don't like interviews. I just, you know, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm lazy. I, I'm really lazy, I, you know, people don't understand how lazy I am, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that there are a bunch of people here that are trying to um, offer services in a specific area. So go to various social websites like TikTok, Instagram, and talk about your services. And more importantly, even focus on a community. I know it sounds more limited, but it makes you a lot more stronger in that specific area, right? Makes sense? All right, cool. Quora. So Quora and asking other websites being questions. Here is a great example. So here we are at Quora, and right here, I am looking for a Las Vegas best web design company to create a stunning website for my e-commerce business. Does anyone know? Now. I'm just going to make the claim and I'm just going to speculate that this was probably written by someone else in another country that is working for a specific uh, company, right? This is probably an SEO company because what they've done here is, has anyone looked for a best web design company? Now this right here is the keyword that they're targeting, right? Does anyone know? I mean, this is an unfinished sentence. This is what we call a fragment, right? So does anyone know? Does anyone know what? You know, like, so they probably don't have good grammar as well, right? But you can see that this company right here is listed number one. And they probably, you know, maybe actually these are all AKAs. Maybe this is all the same company and they probably just have all of them here acting like, oh, they're different companies, but maybe it's even the same one, right? I mean, there's a lot of devious strategies uh, people use to get business, but um, going to Quora, Asking these questions and answering them is a great way on how you guys can pick up more traffic from Quora. I mean, these guys get like a few million visits like every month. So it's, it's a lot of traffic these guys do get, right? Okay, Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. We did talk about Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. Me personally, I don't really find them very effective today. And you're gonna find other creators that are gonna deny that and say, no, that's not true. But I have seen other uh, content creators saying that Facebook groups are just like the epitome of bad traffic. And I, I do agree. Uh, LinkedIn groups as well. I don't think people actively looking for digital marketing services are just going to sit in groups all day, right? I think you need to find those people who are in the market right now searching. Those are the people that you want. 
Um, these are good for like authority, right? That's all they're good for, but I don't think you're gonna find uh, customers in those groups personally. I could be very wrong, but me personally, I feel like you, you have to spend so much time to maintain those groups. To me, it's just not worth it. All right, so that's my two cents. And here we go, marketing. Showcase your pins on Dribble and Behance. This is a great way on how you guys can showcase your work. And this also gets picked up by Google Images. So it's actually funny. For my website, Kopi Coffee, we actually found our designer through uh, Behance. And we found it because we went on Google Images and we found an image we really liked. We went back to their Behance profile and then we hired them. So that person made around $2,000 just because he posted his stuff on Dribble and Behance. So post as much as you can on Dribble on Behance because that does get picked up by the Google search. So again, Dribble and Behance, it is a great way on how to get more traffic and how to get more clients for your business. All right, create pins about your agency. Guys, this is a hidden gem again. Who uses Pinterest the most? It's women. Who spends money the most? It's women. So make sure that you guys do have a Pinterest account and that you guys post your content or post whatever it is on Pinterest. Here is a, an example, right? So we have this guy right here, web design, and they have web design inspiration, development, app design. And this guy is listing like tons of other uh, pins and companies and he's pinning all of this stuff right here. I do the same thing for my websites. So on my websites, whoops. You guys will see that we have tons of templates and people actually look at these templates and they're like, oh, this is so nice. Like, oh my gosh, I, I want I want that, I want that. You know, when they see it, they want it, they go to my website, they buy something, that's where we make money, right? And we actually do uh, sell these templates on my website, joewilson.com, so if you guys do wanna buy them, we actually offer more than 250 templates that you guys can buy for a lifetime payment for $100, right? So. Um, you're not gonna find a better deal. You guys won't. If you guys think you guys can, good luck, but I guarantee you, you will not find someone to make you more than 250 premium quality templates for $100. It is a very, very good price. And our templates, they really stand out. You know, like for example, let's just go ahead and just take a quick look at one of these or two of these. I mean, we have some really uh, good designers and you know, these look really amazing. So for example, we'll just, We'll just, uh, here we go. We'll just we'll just check out these three, right? We have this one right here. And the great part is that we give you the header, the footer, the pop-ups. We give you all of the different sections that you guys need for your websites. So um, this is one. This is another one, right? And we have various pages for each specific kit, right? So they all do look great. And again, the great part about this is that you guys only have to pay a one-time lifetime payment of $100 and you get access to all of our templates. I think right now we have uh, how much do we have right now? We have 250 and we add 10 every single month. It is the best value if you guys do wanna buy these templates. I will leave a link to my website in the description below of this video. You guys are very welcome. All right, next, let's go ahead now and talk about, okay, so we talked about Joe Bahant and pins, right? Now, let me go ahead and, and step back here. So what you guys can also do on Pinterest is, I understand making these pins is very tedious, right? Uh, we actually paid someone to actually create all these pins. So you guys can actually go to fiverr.com, right? And then type in Pinterest pins, Pinterest pins. And a lot of these guys can create literally like hundreds of thousands of pins for like 50 to hundred bucks. And essentially what they're doing here is they are building backlinks to your website. So you can pay someone like, you know, this person right here, you pay them $5, they'll build a hundred pins back to your websites. So actually hiring someone on the regular here and getting them to do that is great because also these pins do show up on Google Images. So when people are searching through Google Images, they will find the pins as well. And that will get you more customers and more traffic back to your um, website. Look at this, 5,000 pins. No, no crap, are you, are you crapping me? Hold on, oh, no, 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 no. See, they bait and switched us, those cheaters, they said, 5,000 for 150, but it's actually 500 for 5,000. But hey, that is a hell of a deal, right? So that's why I recommend hiring a virtual assistant so they can do all this for you because um, it's just so much, it's so much grunt work to be honest. And your main business is to focus on your business and clients, right? So pins, it's a great way on how to get more clients. Uh, post as many as you want. You know, we have on my Pinterest right here, 
I think we have more than like, um, I mean, we have like literally like probably like hundreds of pins, like so many pins. And yeah, and actually this is a great place to advertise as well. I personally advertise on Pinterest and it's very cheap. You're gonna get tons of impressions and we actually do get a lot of conversions on Pinterest. I think every month we get around like five to 10 sales a month from Pinterest, you know? So that's probably, you know, five to 10, that can be, uh, you know, a thousand dollars, you know, just from having pins, you know, it's, it's free money. All right, Craigslist like we talked about. Craigslist is probably one of the most uh, popular websites out here. And what you guys can do is go to Craigslist and um, you can post about your company here and also take a look at the job sector. So you'll see that people are looking for help. So you guys can go to Craigslist. I know Craigslist is probably one of the ugliest websites out there. I mean, it is really ugly, but I mean, this website just gets like literally millions of views a month. So posting on the job section and looking for gigs is also a great way on how to get more clients. Classified ads related to your niche, we did talk about that guest posts on highly regarded web design, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, you guys can go to very popular websites like clutch.co. All right, so I typed in top 10 best web designers in Las Vegas. You guys are gonna see that Yelp comes up first. That's why I highly recommend to add your website to directory websites. And then below that, we have the maps, which we did talk about how to submit your listing there, right? And below that, we have more directory websites. But also you guys might notice that you guys actually just have normal blogs that are um, advertising other businesses. So let's take a look at this one right here, 10 best design, right? I mean, you guys can reach out to this company here saying, hey, what do I need to do to get my website on your list? And they might you know, request a fee. Also, if you guys do just find normal bloggers, I haven't found any yet, but if you guys do find just normal bloggers, reach out to them saying, hey, can you guys write about my company and see if you guys can exchange a fee because that can get you permanent traffic to your website, right? All right, and the last is Facebook ads. And again, like we talked about, you want to focus on local. I cannot stress that enough. So that is also a very important part of this tutorial. One more topic I do want to squeeze in here about how to market your digital marketing agency, and that is affiliate marketing. Now, I personally use affiliate marketing for my coffee business, and I actually have affiliates that are bringing me traffic and even getting me sales for my coffee websites. Now, you guys can do the same exact thing for your digital marketing agency. In fact, there are tons of companies that approach me all the time and want me to promote it on my blog or on my YouTube channel. So you guys can use cj.com, which is Commission Junction. You guys can use Share Sale and Impact Radius, or I'm sorry, it's now called Impact. Now, let me give you guys an in uh, behind the scenes look here, right? So this is Share Sale, and you guys can see that um, I actually registered my business and now people are signing up as affiliates. And they brought me, you know, 95 website clicks, but you guys can see here that uh, the affiliates here are bringing me traffic slowly by slowly, right? So registering on these websites is a great way to start building your brand and getting affiliates to promote your business. Uh, I get offers all the time, guys. I mean, people want me to promote their, you know, their business for a uh, web design and stuff like that. And I only take very few offers. I don't do it that much, but that doesn't mean other affiliates won't do it. And you can offer something like 10% commission rate. So what you'll do is you'll sign up to programs like share sale or impact. And once you guys do that, uh, and someone uses the link, they will then get a commission if someone actually goes to your website and buys something. And the more commission that you offer, the more likely more affiliates will register for your program, right? Me personally, like if someone if someone out here offers me like 5% or 10%, I'm just gonna be like, nah, man, I'm not doing it. Like the, the, the rate is 50, you know, I want 50%. And a lot of digital businesses will just take it because sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, here's the dark side about all this, guys. Sometimes as an affiliate, people don't use my link, right? So if I talk about something, they still get the free branding, right? So me personally, I kind of charge a fee sometimes, guys, you know, just between me and you guys. But uh, for normal affiliates and businesses, um, it's always good to have affiliates promote your stuff because um, they're gonna bring you traffic. And sometimes when users actually see the actual brand, they might just go to the website and that will still get you uh, sales, you know, so that is one benefit of uh, 
enrolling in an affiliate program. So you guys can go to cj.com, sharesale.com, impact.com, and you guys can register with these websites as a uh, agency or e-commerce website or dropshipping website or whatever, right? And affiliates will actually go over here and they're gonna say, all right, let's, let's go ahead and take a look. You know, I wanna promote a digital marketing business, but which ones are out there and what commissions are they offering, right? So I'm just gonna type in digital, you know, I don't even know. Let's just, let's just see what happens here. I have no idea what to expect. And it looks like we have the Hoth. You know, they're a digital marketing agency, right? We have these other ones, which I don't even know who they are, but you can see the uh, commission rates. And some actually have free trials. So you can actually pay per lead. And I believe some websites even let you pay per traffic, right? Like one penny a visitor or something like that. And, you know, as an affiliate, you know, if you're bringing a million of visitors, that's not a bad gig. You know, it's like, all right, that's $10,000 I just made, right? So it, it really isn't a bad gig for, even for affiliates to bring uh, free traffic. So you guys can register on these websites right here. And this is a good way on how you guys can get more traffic to your digital marketing agency. And that is pretty much it for the marketing section of this video. So guys, marketing is a journey, right? But it's a consistent journey. So you need to be consistent with your marketing efforts. I cannot stress that enough. Marketing is the second most important factor about your business. So hire a virtual assistant, have them actually go through all these slides right here and just tell them, I want you to do all this. I want you to do all this every single month. Here's 500 bucks, a thousand dollars, whatever, right? Put them on a salary and then you can uh, have them do all of this right here because a lot of this is just, uh, I don't want to say spamming, but a lot of this is just submitting information, uh, filling stuff out, pay, creating pins. It's a lot of tedious work that you might not want to do. And again, your job is to focus on your clients. So I will leave these slides in the description of this video and I do hope this helps. I know it's a lot of work, but again, consistency is everything. You wanna keep posting. You wanna keep submitting your websites to directory websites. You wanna reach out to bloggers. You want to solidify your business as a visible presence so people can find you and that you guys can make money. So I hope this part of the video helped you guys out. Hopefully you guys learned some new stuff. I mean, even when I was actually researching some topics, I found some websites that I was like, hey, that's pretty cool, you know? So I hope this part of the video helped you guys out and I hope that you guys have the tools that you guys need to market your business. And party people, congratulations for making it to the end of this tutorial. I really do hope this video helped you guys out. Me and my team, we did spend a long time gathering all these resources and really structuring this tutorial to make it perfect for pretty much anyone that wants to get started with digital marketing. So I really do hope that you guys enjoy this tutorial. If you guys do have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, let me know what kind of digital marketing agency you guys are creating. There are various ones. If you guys have questions regarding like customer feedback or payment merchants or anything, uh, put it in the comments because I do have a lot of knowledge about this because I did run my own web design firm for about two years before I transitioned over to YouTube. So I do hope this video helped you guys out. And again, uh, let me know in the comments how I did, how this video was. Enjoy your digital marketing website. And also just remember that we have all these slides in the description below this video so you guys can refer to those at any time. My name is Daryl Wilson. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.